Hey, Poop. I wanted to do... 2023 is here. I told you to stop doing that because you're going to ruin the magic. We I guess also did be- that on the last episode. I know. It's also, it's it's only New Year's for us. It's been a Exactly. A bit. It's been a bit. Uh, you already did that song. Well, I did it again. Last week, but we just don't remember because it was over a month ago that we recorded <laughs> last. It's like movie magic or podcast magic of like, oh, it sounds like you just heard from us yesterday. But I actually haven't talked to Christine in, since the beginning of December. It's been it's a while. It's very odd. And I, I don't know why we do this really. For our own sanity. Is that it's why? also it's also good for us to take breaks because then I miss you and then yeah. I I come back and we've got things to talk about. You know, we, we chatted back. briefly yesterday and I was like, oh, uh, uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I That's thought it. more. I thought more was coming, but no, I agree. Well, I texted we, you, hey, can you talk for two minutes? And you were like, you like clearly were like, uh, what do you want? <laughs> Oh, I thought, well, no, the, when we had been texting it, there was like a, a really weird misunderstanding. And, and so, so then M you thought said, I was going to like hammer down on the semantics of the conversation. I know that's what M thought. I was like, no, I swear. It's just a funny thing I want to tell you. You just went, can you talk for a couple minutes? And I went, oh, I think I'm in trouble. And so, so you went, LOL. Okay. And I was like, oh boy. I was, prepared. Thinks, I was prepared. So when you answered the phone, I was like, I swear it's funny. And it's only two minutes. <laughs> I promise. It was funny uh no i i definitely missed you i i do like our breaks from each other not because i you know not in a bad way i just i like getting to come back and feel fresh with you so yeah there's a lot we've missed how are you what are you up to what's the what's the what's 411 the, oh the 411 wow um well i i've been gone this entire time the whole time we haven't talked i feel like i've not been here yeah. Actually, that is true. I only got back a couple of days ago. Um, I've been on the East Coast. I spent a week with Allison's family. Then I spent a while with my family in Fredericksburg. Um, and it was it was nice, but I'm dealing with some anxiety issues, and I don't know what that's about. But I've also heard that a lot of people are going through that right now, that a lot of people are having like weird panic attacks for no reason. Oh, and I haven't heard that, but I'm also in that boat, so maybe I'm part of the the, the mob. Maybe I don't. Yeah, I was. I, it's been actually really bad, and I'm like, not in. They've been moments where like the panic attacks were so bad, I thought my ablation was reversing, and I was yeah. having an SVT episode, and it didn't feel exactly like SVT, but it felt like SVT was trying to happen, yeah. and I. And I was like, even like on the plane ride home, I like had to take a Xanax. I like couldn't breathe. I don't know what my deal was. But okay, a couple weeks ago, I, I'm not trying to. I'm trying to just no, add no, no. to your story. I'm not trying to overtake your story, but that's it's just making me think because we went to Trader Joe's a couple weeks ago, and I had um like a full blown panic attack, like I have not had in years and the only other time i felt that way was the day my grandmother died and i was like having this panic attack and i like remember i sat down on the sidewalk and i was like please my grandma died and he was like what no she didn't (gasps) we just heard about her last night and we got home and i got that message so in the trader joe's i'm like did someone die they're going something happened something bad happened and blaze is like oh my god the last time she said this (laughs) it was true and i was i mean losing my ever-loving mind i was like were you also with the baby yeah, and I was like, oh, I have to go sit in the, the car worst. and just like, I, but I called my mom and everyone took it very seriously and like called everybody in the family. No, as far as I know, nothing happened, but I was like, the, the only other time I felt like this was when my grandmother died and I was like, something terrible is happening. I'm having like a full blown, I mean, maybe it was literally just a good old panic attack, but I mean, like, whoa. like, and I've never really had panic attacks. I was like, is this 30? Like, I don't know what the fucking deal is, but like, I... Like I, we were, it was after New Year's and after New Year's, on New Year's Day, we ends up having like the debriefing of New Year's where we all talk about how New Year's went. And I, so I was at brunch and like all of a sudden, like I had just drank a shitload of water. I had just eaten a lot of food. New Year's uh, night, we actually, everyone was a 30 year old and went to bed at like one in the morning. So like (laughs) I actually had some fairly good sleep. There was no physiological reason why I should have, why this should have happened. Yeah. But I was sitting at the table after just eating and all of a sudden I was like, I think I'm going to pass out. And I like, I like felt really lightheaded and dizzy. And then all of a sudden my heart started going really fast. Oh no. 
And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And actually since from New Year's until like only a couple days ago, I feel like I was just in like a forever panic attack. And it was really brutal. It's and bizarre. I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm freaking I I was freaking out that like maybe it was my heart, but maybe it was just then I went on TikTok and everyone's having panic attacks. So maybe there's like some maybe it's a new COVID or something. I have no idea, but I it, it freaked me out. So anyway, I'm glad to hear. I hate that that happens to you, but I'm glad to hear that I'm not alone. That this just yeah, it happened you know, for I didn't no reason. Tell anyone because I was like, well, I genuinely was sure. I was like, something, somebody, something has happened. Somebody, somebody's either hurt or dead. Maybe you were and feeling like, me on the other bits. side of. <laughs> I mean, maybe I was, and so that's why I didn't tell anyone because I was like, I don't want anyone to get all flipped out or anything. Mm. Um, but it was very bizarre. And the next day, I was like holding my breath for like three days, like waiting for somebody to call and be like, "Yeah, you know, something, something happened." Happened, but I mean, as far as I know, I haven't gotten any news. So no one, no one's super Ooh. duper important. Yeah, in your life, I mean, I, clearly nobody who they think is important enough to notify me. You know, right. so. Uh, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, well, I'm sorry you're feeling... I hope being at home has calmed your nerves a bit. Maybe. It actually, the second I got home, I haven't felt it. So Good. I don't oh, know maybe if... Maybe it's just all the, like, bus hustle and bustle. Maybe. Or maybe I'm, like... I think I felt, like, maybe it was the stress of, like, knowing I have to get back to work. And, like, I was... I don't know. Mm. I have no idea. But, um... Anyway, that was that was a wild time. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> oh God. Well, I hope I hope uh, you know, well I obviously I we've learned I can't hope for anything and nope. we just coast. So we just let it happen. We look twenty twenty three in the eye and say, All right, how's this gonna go? Yeah. Um what are you drinking, Christine? Okay, wait, can I give you my updates? Since I yeah. haven't seen you in oh. talk to you in like a month. Yes, yes. I'm a cool mom now. Got a nose piercing. Oh my god. Well, you are cool, mom. You didn't need the nose piercing for that, but you look extra rock star all of a Thank sudden. Thank you. My stepmom said, what the hell did you do to your face? Was that... Have you not always had your nose pierced? I thought you always did. No, I got this done like two weeks ago. I mean, I don't remember you having... An, I, I thought you said like maybe the hole closed up or something. I thought you always no, had nose piercing. No, I've never had one. I was... my. Um, like the big dork I am, my, my 18 year old sister had to take me. She made the appointment. <laughs> did she hold your hand? Phone. She did not, but, but she did do, she did go first because I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> did it hurt? What does it feel like? Um, it like stung a bit, but it didn't really hurt. I, I will say my cartilage piercing on my ear, it took a lot longer to heal. And I've I think that it's just, one's the worst. It just really hurt. Cause I think I just kept getting my hair caught in it. And so it just always Ooh. hurt. But this one, I mean, honestly, by the next day was like fine. How long do you have to keep that in until you can switch them out? Um, they said like 10 to 12 weeks before you can replace it with like a smaller. So now I got to get used to you picking your nose all the time. No, I don't because I'm trying not to mess with it, you know. But I mean, you you do know I'm a fidgeter, so it is difficult to not. I be... don't know a person with a nose piercing that doesn't always look like doesn't they're picking fidget. their nose for yeah, a little bit. You that's know? true. That's true. I'll try thing. to keep my hands off. Um, it's part of the oh, culture. Yeah, it's part of the culture. We get to pick our nose now, and it's acceptable, <laughs> societally acceptable. Um, other update was that uh, Leona's started walking, like <gasps> like just barely. She's taking her steps, but this morning she walked like six steps, which was the most she's ever done. So, so wow. that's an update. When was her first official step that you consider December a real 23rd, step? December 23rd. She took like three or four steps. And what did she walk to? From Blaze to me, and then from me to Blaze. <laughs> so you first. Sounds like she loves you more. That's I mean, I'm say. I th why are you even saying that? Like, it's I a surprise. It's true. <laughs> I didn't know she happened to be, like, running towards, like, a tomato or something, you know? <laughs> I was holding a tomato. Interesting. Now that you mention it. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, last update. Uh, hypnotherapy on my phone anxiety did not work. So, oh, no. You know, well, do you have to I, do more than one session or and that's something? That's what or? I thought, but she was basically like, you're done. And I was like, I am? And then I went home and was like, I don't feel much better about it. I will say she definitely helped me get to the bottom of some of it. And the first, like, f it was like a 90 minute session. And the first full hour was j like basically therapy. And so mm. I was like, okay, so we just like kind of got to the bottom of some things, but I still feel like I'm not totally sure. And then she did like a half hour hypnotherapy thing. I just, it didn't seem to do the trick. So I got to figure out. And I, it's it's too awkward now for me to try and go back. Because she's yeah. like, I fixed you. And now I'm like, well, I guess I got to find someone new. I don't know. 
Oh, that sucks. I feel I'm like bummed. if my father could be hypnotized away from cigarettes, then like you, I, I to me, anything's possible. I guess. Yeah. Not. I well, I wonder, I feel like her approach was a very like holistic mm. way of looking at it. Like, let's really delve into your feelings. And I'm like, I do that all the time. I do that at therapy. I do that when I journal. I do that when I talk to anyone I speak to. I do that when I podcast. I always get to the bottom of my feelings. I don't want to get to the bottom of my feelings. I just want to stop being afraid of the telephone. And so I know there was probably good reason why she wanted to really delve into the emotional part of it. Mm. But I was like, I, I just just zap it out of my brain, you know? Just do, <laughs> do that part. Just as yeah. <laughs> just a little zap. Uh anyway. Well, so that, I'm sorry, that sucks. People might have been wondering because I had mentioned it um you had such high hopes i did you know and now i'm I'm wondering if maybe if somebody could let me know maybe email the the podcast email or dm me if you know of any like hypnotherapy online like maybe some like courses i can do or i don't know let me know if anybody has tried it and it has worked for you because uh i don't think em's gonna be able to figure out where the hypnotherapist that worked on their dad is or maybe somewhere in do, virginia my friend i'll have to fly to virginia <laughs> who knows if they're still practice. it's a lot more steps i'll do it if it takes if that's what it takes but you know with the internet i'm sure someone online can help me i don't know if my mom were here she'd tell you to take like a tony robbins course or nope. something <laughs> <laughs> certainly not that <laughs> <sighs> no i that stinks i of all the anxieties I've got, I don't have phone anxiety, but I feel like if we put our bingo cards together, maybe we've got the whole gamut. Yeah, you know? I feel like you and I make quite a pair for that reason. Like, you know, yeah. we really do trade off on each other's issues. I think um, so, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, anyway, oy. that's my updates. I just wanted to let people know before uh, well, everyone good. started signing up for hypnotherapy and then blaming me when they didn't stop drinking Diet Coke or whatever. Well, I have... I, I I have high hopes for you that it will be Thank cured you. eventually. Yes, it we has can, to be. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> we'll we'll role play phone calls to, with each other sometime, and I'll okay. I'll do, I'll That'll do, be fun. Ring ring ring. Because you're not afraid when I call, so I'll just pretend I'm a doctor or something when I call. And maybe I'll just, just change like, your photo every time to like a different person <laughs> and just be like, who's on the other end? I'll just start calling you and be like, well, the results are in. And oh, <laughs> you still have phone anxiety because yeah. this is a voicemail and you didn't pick up. You fail. Hello, this is the voice, uh, the voice answering machine repair man, and uh, you have over. F- you are the worst client we've ever had. I yeah, keep having to I fix your phone. I currently have. Uh, I'm going to keep it this way because I currently have 69 voicemails that I haven't listened to. Is that on um, purpose? No, but it is now. Once I hit oh. 69, I was like, I should just leave it at that. So. I literally have voicemails for years. Like, yeah, just me years. Too. I, me too. Or like, and like, my mom will say, like, why don't you check your voicemail? And I'm like, you texted me to tell me to check my voicemail. Why don't you just text it to me? Yeah, exactly. What? It was, I'm and certainly then, not going to know. Every time you I'm, check your voicemail, it's like, it's 2.32 p.m. Yeah. And I'm like, Dad, I know what time it is. You called I don't know. me. I truly, I can't think of a time that somebody our age actually left a voicemail in the last five years or i left a voicemail for someone in the last five years i, can't I always think of leave it. voicemails because i always call do you because off- only because i call doctor's offices when they're closed oh. intentionally because uh-huh. i'm a lunatic i um, don't even think i would know how to leave a voicemail anymore i've i haven't done it I'm in good so at that. long for some reason i'm good at that if like, no one else is on the other end other than my grandparents which like but then again, that's not like I don't know anyone our age I've left a voicemail for or vice versa. It, truly mm. since college, maybe not even. Yeah, I guess. Can you? Anyway, here's my voicemail. I want you to see that for everybody. Uh, that is like 389. Oh, Jesus. OK, so you're worse than me. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Well, OK, now I feel less bad because um, I have 69 unread voice messages but they're all from the last couple weeks because i do every now and then go through um and delete them but so these 69 are from august 20th 2022 till now oh wow mine truly probably go back to whenever i got this phone i people will look at my phone and say that it's very overwhelming like for my emails it says i have 3500 unopened emails yep Yep. that's. I'm not proud of it. I'm just saying no. I'm aware that it, there's chaos involved. You I, know, I posted a picture recently on Be Real, and it showed like it just had part of my computer in the background, 
and someone said, oh my God, 639 emails. You're giving me anxiety. And I like shifted it over and the other tab had 3,820. I was like, 600 is nothing. <laughs> I have like total, I have like almost five grand. Okay. Like sit down. Like this is grand. no amateur hour. 5K. 5K. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm, I'm glad that I'm back with you. Do, do, oh, last question I'll ask you. Did you get any good Christmas presents? Ooh, yes, I got. Okay, you're not really probably going to care about this, but it's it's uh, it's very exciting for me. Blaze got me this Rise Garden, which is like this cool indoor garden where I can like. I've um, seen these. It comes with like solar lights and you can plant like all your herbs and stuff indoors. Gardening it's of the future. So cool. And I'm so excited because it'll it like really walks you through everything so that, you know, I don't have to go outside and accidentally you, kill my plants well especially also now on the east coast with seasons you gotta you yeah can, it's such have a pain you, in the butt have you seen the um i don't know if it's ads or news reports but they're like building a or there's like there's gonna be a tower made of it or something there's <gasps> like like on the outside it'll be rice gardens or maybe on the roof it'll be rice gardens it's supposed Ooh. to be like a, like a self-sustaining building or, or I something i love that but anyway, um, I'm sending you a picture of the one he got me. I'm very excited about it because I'm going to grow lots of pretty things. Uh, I think it's this one, although ooh. I think it might be the smaller version because this one's very expensive. Oh, um, well, <laughs> it's very cute. Yeah, I'm very excited. I haven't even set it up yet. What about you? Did you get anything fun? Um, yes, I got I got a few things. Um, the, the two stars which were from my mother they always are she's <laughs> she i think she really tries to outdo herself every year and she got me um one of the back to the future props um which is i can confirm is fully a, a replica like a true to movie replica because the guy who runs the etsy shop was the guy who made all of the movie replicas for like universal studios whoa um, so it's definitely the the hardcore that's pretty thing. cool. And then my mom also got me a I asked for it thinking there's no way she'll get this for me. <gasps> and then she did. And I what? So, and now I'm like very intimidated because now I have to commit to this hobby <gasps> is a 3D printer. <gasps> I'm Fun. so scared. I'm so gargoyles, scared. Gargoyles, gargoyles, so many gargoyles. <laughs> I know. I actually did think I was like a whole colony of gargoyles for my desk. <laughs> a colony. Um, a murder of gargoyles. <laughs> a school um no i i'm very scared because we know that i get really intense interests and then drop them about four days later yeah. um but a 3d printer is like and i i had research because again this was one of my spiral interests where i dove <laughs> deep into if i were to get a 3d printer what would be the exact one sure. i wanted so i know it's a very good one um and also it just i i'm very grateful that someone got it for me but now i really have to like learn how to 3d print Hell so yeah. all of a sudden i'm about to have a completely new trade under my I'm belt excited. So. but it's I, like my cricket machine where like i'll go a few months without using it and then i'll be like oh i could do something cool with it for this project like it'll be like a cool tool to have for like other spirals it is it is that's very true especially because like i have dipped my toe in like and like avenger cosplay stuff Yay! and so like i can at least try to make props and oh, stuff like yeah, that that's so smart they also like have files online that like i can at least practice with I, it's really gonna be quite a journey and i think i'm gonna get fed up a lot but i'll keep coming back to it but i the one thing i'm really upset about is like i made the troll hole to like every place like everything's filled. I don't know where I'm going to put this thing now. And it's obviously going in the troll hole. Sorry, I have no yeah. idea. What's, it's probably going to have to balance on this little stand. But then where do I put this like fun little cube guy? So I, we, we might have to do a, a, a reno. Rookie mistake not leaving space for more tchotchkes. It really is one of my, I, and like this whole like blank part of the wall. I feel like a lot of people might think like, oh, my wall's off center. No, this is fully perfectly uniform. Oh, except... I just leave a, a big blank space because I know I'm going to get more bullshit. So I thought that was the smart spot to to leave a blank mm -hmm. spot on the wall. I didn't even think about the floor. Mm. What about in the closet where you have the the storage stuff? Maybe one of the shelves you can like shift to the end. That's why I drink apartment and instead put the printer on the shelf. Maybe. We'll have to figure it out for sure. Because I may I, have outlets in there too. Mm-hmm. That's true. I'll have to figure it out. <sighs> anyway, I'm grateful but scared. 
same. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we've hit 20 minutes without talking Woo-hoo! about anything paranormal or crime related. <sighs> but uh, no, Happy New Year. I'm happy to uh, be with you. And I'm very grateful that we have still have a show after all these years. I just I, I can't believe it. I just sometimes I think uh, I don't know if taking it for granted is is truly what I do. But sometimes I, I don't let myself sit with like how yeah, good our absolutely. lives are. I think we, it's hard to, yeah, I think it's easy to get like, not jaded either. That sounds so negative, but just like to get used to it. And mm-hmm. then suddenly you're like, hang on, this isn't will... a fever dream. Like this is my real life. <laughs> I know we're the two of us are probably some of the luckiest people in terms of like, to, like a career. Like I get I to work very with... fortunate. Yes. And I only say that cause I was just having like a moment of reflection uh, a couple days ago and I was like holy shit like I can't believe this is our life and uh I also this is it's not meant to be like a a brag or anything Mm-mm. this is just like kind of I guess like a it's meant to be a warm PSA so I, I hope that that's yeah how it's yes. taken but when I was home um I got this sounds this is the most like famous celebrity thing I'll ever say in my life but I got recognized so many times while I was home like Aww. more than I've ever been and I don't know what it was but I think maybe I was like I've I think I was just like down in the dumps before uh uh the holiday break and I think I was just feeling really overwhelmed I just felt like I wasn't like either doing enough or maybe I felt like you know I am just constantly terrified of like what the next move is and things like that and it was it it felt cosmic that so many people just came up and just like said yeah. such nice things to me um about the show and they wanted me to pass on hot hi- highs and hellos to you mm. but it was just like it felt really um rejuvenating and That's so great. it was it was very nice so anyone who did um pop over and and say hi or say something nice i really appreciated it it really oh, happened in a time where i really needed it so yeah no i love that and i feel you. like that goes into again it's not necessarily a brag it's just like especially when you're doing i think a lot of people can relate like if you're doing a job behind a screen or you're doing mm-hmm. a job and you don't necessarily realize like cuz how could you like an impact you're having outside of like your own little bubble um especially nowadays uh like pandemic wise and everything so yeah it's just like a reminder like oh people care about what you do and yeah um, it felt very rewarding and I I I needed to feel that so I appreciate you guys so thank you yeah thank you for for letting us seriously do this and as a as a secondary PSA to hop onto M's PSA um it's listen we're not like special you know if there's something where you're like I wanted to I want to be doing something cool or cool hobby like that's what we thought, and then we did it. So you know, hobbies out. hobbies turn into careers sometimes, and it's it's a very wonderful thing. So, um, I might leave all of you for three D printing. Is what I'm saying. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes me nervous, but <laughs> I'll just the second I learn how to three D print a Hersine shifter action figure, it's fucking <laughs> you over. You don't need me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, back to like with the let's, thing that we haven't e- let's even it. talked about. Here's some crime. Here's some paranormal. I hope everyone. Anyway. That was us being sentimental, but also catching up. But now you're here for some spooks. Yeah. Um, to the person on YouTube who lets everyone know that, you know, when we the start time. talking about creepy stuff, um, know that you're about 20 minutes. We're aware. So thank wait, you. Wait, should we talk about something else real quick just to fuck them over? <laughs> just like <laughs> let them wait a little bit longer. Oh, my God. Someone's ripping their hair out. Pulling right their hair out. <laughs> someone's like, I'm trying to be nice and do a service. Okay. Oh. Okay. It starts. My friend, too, does that. It starts right now. Christine, today we're talking about the Banshee. <gasps> Ooh! I feel like we haven't talked about the Banshee. Nope. Uh, we the uh, and the closest thing to Banshee I've ever really known, which is like so far removed, is like X Men. Like uh, there's a there's a Banshee. I don't even X-Men. know that. Looks like a blue wolf, uh, werewolf or something. Okay, that's a, that's all I knew. And also, oh. I heard like wailing like a Banshee. Sure. Or um. It, I think in, in Charmed, there was an episode of the Banshee where, like, she was seducing men or something Ooh. with, like, her, or I I think she was seducing them. And then when they got close enough, she'd, like, scream and their I think heads would explode or something. Too. Oh, harpies. I Maybe I've always combined the two. Yeah, I feel like they're similar, but that's probably just me being ignorant. Oh, well, welcome. Because <laughs> I'm also an ignoramus on this. So, Aww. 
Uh, so I will say most of the information I got for this episode is from a dissertation by a folklorist named Patricia Lysat. Lysat? Lysat? And um, so I just wanted to give a shout out. Um, and I tried to keep it, you know, as informative as possible instead of me talking about the X-Men the whole time. So here we go. Thank God. So the Banshee, who uses she, her pronouns, thank you for normalizing pronouns, <laughs> uh, is a death messenger. Oh, cool. Which, like, girl power. Chill. Um, so chill. So she's known to... What do you know, by the way, before I tell you what she does? I mean, basically less than you. I know that she screams. Okay. Uh, that is true. The end. Okay. And I know she's dangerous, I think. Like, she's, like, enticing but dangerous, I think. Yeah, my understanding was always don't get near a banshee. Yeah. If you if yeah. you hear the screams, consider that a warning and stay away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's a death messenger. And she is known <laughs> <Great>. to <laughs> uh she's known to appear to people, which I didn't know she appeared to people. I just thought you heard her. But uh sometimes she will show up um and you can see her. And she's there to announce an upcoming or recent death, which is very interesting that you just mentioned your panic attack I, I just got like full chills because i'm like was she in the trader joe's it's remember like, oh so that's you what that blue lady on the ceiling was doing there <laughs> i didn't know why she was screaming so loud stop it christine <laughs> okay so banshee uh, is uh an irish word it means the fairy woman or it also means a woman of the other world we mentioned mm. a couple episodes ago that fairies in the other world I, we kind of nodded at that just not too long ago yeah and not too long ago, we also mentioned how wild Irish names are. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell me how you think Banshee in, Boy, is spelled. If it's anything like Sersha. <laughs> it's, it's worse. <laughs> it's Worsha. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to our Irish friends. Um, let's see. Just give a, just guess e a, a letter. I. Oh, it's, I'll give you here. I'll give you a hint. Banshee does not start with a B. For God's sake, I thought that was my only given. I was like, at least I got the first letter right. Um, G. No, I, I you know, I actually don't Just, know if this means a Banshee or Banshee, but it's apparently spelled A N space B H E A N space S I. Whoa. So I B think maybe it's on Beyonce. On Beyond Zebra? Wait, wait I, spell it a n and then what b I'm, what i'm wondering if a n actually is just like the article just like, like n, n. <laughs> okay so assuming that's the case so please i was God, right don't make banshee spell with an a n b h e a n space s i oh what's a oh that came up with a different okay i'm not even gonna pretend like i know what this is saying what? let's see uh it was like oh yeah you're right a n is just i think uh the article the article okay so thank god because like i was like banshee. what is going on in ireland <laughs> banshee at least the letters start at least starts with a b i feel okay. like everybody in ireland when we were you were like it doesn't start with a b they were like what the fuck of course it starts with a b. <laughs> okay sorry ireland i really disappointed you what else is new yeah um, they're not surprised it's okay. okay no it's they're both in quotes for me and so i didn't know if i didn't i thought a n might be involved in the word i see i see i see but no okay thank god it starts with a b because i really almost lost my brain for a second there <laughs> okay but so again, it means the fairy woman or a woman of the other world. And Banshee comes, uh, she comes in many forms. She always is a woman. Love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But she can show up young or old. Um, she always shows up not just as a woman. She always shows up alone. She always comes oh. alone. She always leaves alone. Um, and which is interesting because when I hear Death Messenger, I think of like Grim Reaper and like she probably brings you with her, but. She's more just there to kind of like, you know, like the, in the old timey, like, hear ye, hear ye. And they're there oh, to just kind of deliver yes. the message. Mm -hmm. I like to think of her She's as the that. town crier. Yes. That's a great way to put it. The, the town shrieker. The town death shriek crier. Yes. Yeah. Um, she always shows up alone. Many say she is in, uh, she's dressed in white, which in my mind, a banshee was never dressed in anything. So that's interesting. You uh, saw, pictured her naked. You're well, I always pictured her as a werewolf X-Men. Oh. <laughs> With so. fur. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, but so she's, 
she's said to be in white, but I will say this is probably because of an old mistranslation where instead of calling her the fairy woman, I guess that's a close translation to the white woman. And so I think it's just over time become the thought that she's in white for some I reason. See. They merged um, it. Yes, but she really can wear anything. She can be in a dress. She can be in robes. They can be of any color. Um, and a lot of people have said that she is seen with golden blonde hair, but um, a lot of people also say gray. And they also, a lot of people will say that it's incredibly long. And that Ooh. threw me off for a second. Um, but I'll, I'll get to why why they say she has incredibly long hair. It's sometimes it's all the way down to the floor, which whoa, whoa, that's spooky. Maybe she's screaming because she's stepping on her hair. You yeah, know, ow. like maybe you she's know, just tripping I in the woods. I knew I would somehow bring this up, and I I guess I knew I would force it into conversation. But like I've been doing a little daily yoga practice, just like a very very little yoga with Adrian. Mm -hmm. Shout out YouTube. And um, today I did one of those foam rollers because of course I'm already sore because I never move my body. And I did the foam roller and I forgot that my hair was down. And if mm. you get your hair caught in that foam it's the worst. Roller, I just like <laughs> smacked my head back. And it was Ugh. five minutes before we recorded. I'm like, I will definitely be telling Em about this on the podcast. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know when. But there you go. Stepping I'm on your hair. Always happy to leave an insert for you. Be careful There's, out there, folks. It's like when we were in school in PE and they had those scooters. No, no. And you'd be on Fingers, your belly. Nothing safe. Hair. Fingers or hair. If you had nothing ha if, safe. If you had long hair and you were on your belly and you were trying to like push yourself with your hands, oh my god, you your neck got cracked for sure. Danger zone, <laughs> baby. So anyway, that's probably what the banshee's up to in the wood. She keeps going ah and <laughs> ow ow. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um and the reason why she has long hair or i don't know if it's the reason why but it would make sense why people think she has long hair is because probably the thing i did not know at all about the banshee is that the banshee is often seen with a comb a <gasps> hair comb what literally never once in my life would i have put those two things together a comb no. and a banshee so she's often seen combing her hair. It was very long, so she has to comb it, obviously. And uh, that's that's. I had no idea. That How was like odd. The most random fun fact of it all. If at like bar trivia, they were like, "What does a banshee hold?" I would have thought like a, a skull. banjo. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. but not a comb. Not a comb. Not <laughs> Definitely not a comb. <laughs> uh she's also you know i always thought of the banshee as like this big monstrous hulking creature but she is a supposedly very small sometimes she's only a foot tall a foot isn't that crazy whoa i pictured like a, a small person but not like like i thought that's 411 max you yeah know? that's what i was thinking or yeah. four yeah Min. i uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i definitely didn't think she was uh well so like her hair is not that impressive okay if she's only a foot <laughs> off the ground <laughs> That's Just a great saying. point. It's yeah. like, hey, God, your hair is like eight inches, girl. Like, relax. <laughs> it, you're not you're not special. But uh, yeah, she, apparently she's like borrower sized. So, oh my, I had no clue. Um, I, I wonder if if it if it ranges. Maybe she goes it from must, a foot right? tall to like. I feel like this the stories I've heard is like she looks like a normal person. Yeah, so okay. she looks normal. She at least has to grow six times her size. I She's wouldn't like, say normal. That's a stretch. But like at least size wise, I always pictured as like like an average height person. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think it was even more jarring for me because I really thought she was like massive, like a twelve <laughs> foot monster in the woods. <laughs> oh Jesus! But apparently she can. She's like one of those sponges where it's like, grow a boyfriend, you dip Aww. it in water, and she just kind of blooms. That's beautiful. Um, what a beautiful. Uh, metaphor you just created there thank you yeah. uh but so here's the thing though when you encounter her i have just given you a lot of visual aids on what the banshee looks like mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't actually see her maybe because she's so goddamn small but That's true <laughs> maybe she you're like afraid to step on her like it's honey i shrunk the kids or something mm -hmm. but when you encounter her most often you're going to hear her not see her which is why i think even mm. it's been passed to us at least that she's known to scream right and wail and shriek and all this stuff yep so her voice is supernaturally loud duh if you're one <laughs> foot tall and your voice is loud enough for the whole <laughs> town to hear <laughs> Apparently her voice shakes the ground, and I don't know how um, appropriate this is to say, but allegedly anyone who's even hard of hearing can hear her. Oh, okay. Um, that she's so loud so that she- So it's like super, not, it's not even like normal sound. It's like- Yeah, it's like- Other sense. 
others others feel the chill no matter how they need to uh but she apparently like i don't know it doesn't say it here but it sounds like she breaks sound barriers um <laughs> the sound will apparently strike you with fear and you can feel hair strand a uh, uh, hair stand on your neck and your blood will run cold the classic like dogs howling and cattle freaking out um mm. so the second she's around she says i'm in town what are you gonna do about it She's also going to throw her voice, and that's, I guess, super problematic because you can't tell if she's miles yeah, away or right next to you. I don't like that. You can't avoid her then. Exactly. Yeah. And even if you think you're safe, maybe she's standing right behind you. Yeah. Uh, so she's so good at throwing her voice that people have actually heard her from several towns over. Mm. So here's the good news. I got good news for you and all this, Christine. Oh, you better. If you hear a banshee, you're probably safe because the dying person usually doesn't actually hear the banshee screaming. Oh, that's comforting. <laughs> Here's you know, the bad true. news. Oh, okay. Tell me the bad news <laughs> first before I start going on my like little soliloquy over here. Oh, no, no, no. Let's soliloquy it. What? Okay. I was just going to soliloquize real quick. I was just going to say... um, that is comforting because when I have a panic attack in the Trader Joe's, um, not only do I think someone else died, but I really do feel like maybe I'm about to die. So it is kind oh, of okay. like a, both, you know, I'm like both, either I'm in big trouble and or someone I know is in big trouble. Um, thankfully, it turned out to be neither. But in that moment, I was like, wow, this is the end inside oh, yeah. the Trader Joe's. This is where it was going to happen of all places. Um, so at least with the Banshee, you hear or you're like, OK, I'm, I'm free and clear. Right. You are, but here's the bad news: is that if you're hearing it, it's because someone you love is oh, probably going to die. I don't know if I. That's really not. Yeah, that's not much better, huh? So at least you're physically okay, but get ready for your mental status <gasps> to not be great. Um, that's too bad. That's too bad. So her timing is always right before or like immediately after a death. So the earliest she usually shows up is three days before a death. So Oof. I guess your best bet. I mean, you were even saying you were just sitting around waiting for a for phone days. call. So yeah. that's kind of the experience you'd have on a, you know, with luck that she would show up in time for you to be able to say your goodbyes. But often she is known to just show up on the midnight before someone dies. Oh, my gosh. That's the most common so time. So scary. If she hears you talking about her or asking others if they hear her, she'll stop screaming which like sounds lovely like she's like oh i didn't know i was bothering you so as, sorry i was trying to be quiet as i'm breaking the sound barrier yeah. i had no <laughs> clue i was a disturbance you could hear that sonic boom i'm so sorry yeah and you can apparently also tell her to stop screaming and she'll stop which it sounds like she's trying to be respectful but really it's i think a a piece to her game where she doesn't want you to know where she is or she doesn't oh want my, you to oh my gosh so oh no and and when I say it, a lot of people apparently have said like stop screaming and if you insult her at all, she can also you know pr pr re re uh, prioritize what's going on and uh -oh. instead of letting other people know that oh this person coming up is going to die, she'll make room to harm you in some way before uh -oh. she goes on with the rest of her tasks. Um, she's known to sprain joints, make people temporarily go blind. Oh so my gosh. I guess not kill you, but certainly let you know that like that was a banshee and you fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's frightening. So uh, just general rule of thumb, don't insult a banshee. Okay. Too bad we did a lot already. <laughs> it was like, you look like a hulking 12 foot <laughs> monster. You're only a foot tall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I hope she's got a good humor. I a hope good so too. Because I'm just, I'm just, listen, I'm afraid of you, gal. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm just intimidated. I will tell you, which like, we're going to get to it later, but it's usually if men are insulting her. So I think we're okay. Oh, great. She gets it. She gets it. She's one of us. Yeah. yeah um, yeah, yeah. the girls and the gays, you know, the banshee's there for them. So, <laughs> so <Cheater> pronouns. <laughs> I get it. She's look. She's a woke agenda. She's bitch. a woke. She's queen. a bad bitch. Okay. <laughs> okay. So she is known to exist all over Ireland, and she has other nicknames um, besides banshee and bad bitch. Like I just said, um, <laughs> uh -huh. she is also called the keening woman. And so do you know Ooh. what keening means? Yeah. Doesn't that mean like uh, howling or screaming of some sort? 
Yes. Um, and specifically, or more specifically, keening can be for the for the dead. So howling, oh, wailing, crying okay. for the dead. Okay. And her name may have roots as old as the 8th century. So interesting that, I mean, I guess the word keening has probably maybe just been around since the 8th century. But it is mm-hmm. weird that, you know, she's existed somehow. She's been a, a, a blip on the radar, a twinkle in your eye since the 8th century. <laughs> Interestingly, some people actually don't think she's a fairy, even though her name means the fairy woman. Mm -hmm. That doesn't actually totally surprise me because I never considered her a fairy, but I guess I didn't really know much about her to begin with. You also considered her like an X-Men or something, Uh, so I don't know if you're really the the right uh, barometer for that. Fair enough. (laughs) So uh, one of the reasons people don't consider her fairies, besides not ever having thought about it like me... Right. Is that um, unlike fairies, she has no c- friends. Oh, girl. She has no friends, oh. no counterparts, no real community. And I guess in a lot of fairy folklore, there's usually, they're one of many. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Because, yeah, and you did say earlier, she she appears by herself every time. She's mm-hmm. always alone. Yeah. Interesting. And so uh, interesting that she's, she doesn't mm-hmm. have a buddy. Um, in fact, there are stories that she actually might be a human abducted by fairies. Oh, Lord. Isn't that crazy? Like a changeling? Maybe, but I, I don't know. I don't know enough to say yes or no. But okay. it, she, it, she, it, the, the, one of the rumors is that she could be a human abducted by fairies, but she's able to return to cry anytime someone she knows dies, which is just oh, so torturous. That's, that's awful. terrible. <laughs> it's really um, terrible. This would actually track because, well, in some versions, this would track because there are is one version of the story that the Banshee actually is only linked to one family. And it just seems like a lot of people, because maybe the family has grown over the years. (gasps) But if you're a member of that family, only you experience the Banshee. Interesting. So you could be an ancestor to her in human form. Uh, In this version, she shows up to announce deaths in that house specifically, but the town can hear her. Anyone else in town can hear her crying, so that's why most people say they can hear her, not see her. Okay. Um, some people also think that the Banshee is a fallen angel or an evil spirit. And even further, this is not, I don't want to say it's my favorite take, but it's definitely like a wild twist. Okay. Um, some people think that she is the devil herself screaming whenever a baptized person dies because their soul is going to heaven and not with her. Whoa. That. Wow. Okay. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, me neither. Honestly, I really didn't. Um, that's what's interesting? What's interesting about the banshee is I feel like there's a lot of folklore that somehow Christianity takes over in some way or morphs in some way. But with the banshee, there's actually very few stories where Christians have kind of sunk their teeth in and made their own version of the story. That just happens to be one of the very rare theories that christians have thrown in of like oh it's the devil and you coming wishing that they could have your soul but thank god you won't see the banshee because you've been saved like something like that yeah you wish so (laughs) so that's just one case of the banshee another version is that the banshee is actually the ghost of a woman being punished for her bad behavior which you would i know uh, that also sounds a little christian um it's mainly actually because you would think purity culture you'd think oh lust Sure. Or, you know, being on being a strong, independent woman, God forbid. Right, right, right. But it's actually more pride because she loves her long, long hair so much and she's oh, always seen combing on. it. So at least it's not the, the deadly sin we thought it was going to be. Um, I had this Blaze deliver me a liquid death. Sorry. Ooh, oh, I love a liquid death. This me isn't too. An, an ad, by the way. I really I know shit. Love I actually even told myself, don't bring up the brand because I feel like I'm just always pitching different brands and then just like. I feel like people Pretend. think we we like put we talk like this is supposed to be like an organic ad. That I wish like, I were smart enough to do that, but I'm we not. don't do I that. Don't we plan just ahead. we just talk about <laughs> things we like and don't like. Anyway, um, but no, I really do love a, an LD. You know. So, oh, another update. I tried Tony, Tony's Chocolate Only for the first time. <gasps> I TC. never had it. How was what? it? Oh, it was great. Um, the one I liked the best was the was orange it the hazelnut. One? Ah, shit. What's the what's the orange one? And uh, not hazelnut. It's the sea salt caramel that's my least favorite but i'm not a caramel <sighs> person trash but well, i gave it to my mom and she loved the caramel one okay i actually don't like hazelnut so that's you fine you don't like nutella 
not the way sick in the head you know how everyone went through a nutella phase i was not part of that i'm currently long live my nutella phase i don't think it's ever begun or ended it's just been like ever present remember when nutella was like remember bacon and how bacon had like a real oh, yikes i mean a real bacon merch candles, line bacon band-aids yeah yeah they were really i feel like nutella, PR folks were on it i feel like nutella almost had the same agency running for them in terms of like hot topic I merch see. i think I growing up as like german we just always had it around so it was mm. never like a new commodity to me um Fair. but yeah i do remember people getting into it i fucking love that shit Tony Shacklone, by the way, if they're listening, which I don't think they are, but I'm j- I'm just gonna scream it to the heavens whenever I can. There was one flavor that they had that was limited edition, and it needs to be <gasps> the it? it needs to be the bar that they always have. Um, it was like Pharrell Williams or something was like they collaborated on it. Who and the maybe hell is it was Pharrell Williams. Isn't that from uh, oh. Black Eyed Peas? Oh, Pharrell, what is wrong with me? I was, who was I thinking of? I have no idea. Is his last name Williams? I think it is. Yeah. But he had um oh my he had God. some sort of yeah. collaboration with them. Maybe it was for Black Lives Matter or something. He's saying happy because I'm happy. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. Uh I think it was, let me see. Pharrell and Tony's Chuck alone. There has there has to be at least one thing about this. Oh, it comes up in the suggested. Maybe oh. it, I found it. There it is. Black Ambition. It was called the Black Ambition Bar. Is Holy it shit. Chocolate? It was delicious. I don't what know. Was it? I, no, I think it was milk chocolate because I'm not a big dark chocolate fan. I know. That's what I was wondering. I love um, milk chocolate too. It was, um, it had like pretzels in it and nougat oh, or something. Yeah. It, it oh, had, I got like, you. I got you. Milk chocolate with caramel, almond, nougat, pretzel, and sea salt. Damn. Um, it was to die for. And he must have, when he made that flavor, he must have said, like, throw an extra scoop of pretzels in there for the for the fans. I love a pretzel in a chocolate. Wow. It knocked my goddamn socks off. It was so oh, good. Man. So Pharrell Williams, if you're listening to him, that's why we drank, know that you make the best chocolate bar I've ever had. Use promo code drink. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> Again, this has not been an ad because uh our our network is probably like, can you stop? Like, can you just stop <laughs> advertising brands that anyway. Um Where were we? On. Um, oh, no, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Uh, something about oh, she's a she is obsessed with her hair, and so she may be committing a deadly sin. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so this is where I was talking earlier about um, uh, usually she's more upset with men disrespecting her. Right. So the banshee, it feels like this is almost like an Irish, um, not a what's the word when like it's a story with a moral to it. Like a, oh, like a um, <laughs> a fable or maybe like there's like something to be learned at the end. But the 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 banshee basically the moral of the story is don't be gross with women. Don't be insulting. Oh. Don't insult women. Don't disrespect women. Don't uh, consent is consent and no means no. So we love this, okay. um, obviously. But most of the stories where, like, something bad happens to a person is usually when a man is disrespecting the banshee and, like, even tries to, like, grab at her. Uh, there's been a lot of stories where the men try to steal her comb, where a, where she's trying to, like, comb her How hair. How dare you? They'll steal her comb. Some of them have tried to, like, grab her. Some of them have tried. To, I mean, like, Jeez. I'm sure. Let's just throw cat calling in there. Um but it's usually when a man is being real grody with the banshee. And then yeah. she goes, I don't fucking think so. Um, so uh, there are stories of men who see the banshee combing her hair and then they try to startle her and she drops her comb. This in one version of the story, the guy actually grabs it after she dropped the comb and he takes it home. She's pissed and she decides that she's going to get her comb back. And in the story, I guess she actually can't get into your house without like the door being open or something Mm. but she was she was standing on the other side of the door being very threatening and he ended up pushing the comb under the door to like (laughs) get her away he's like here you go take your (laughs) stupid comb um another time there was a story where she stood outside of someone's house because he stole their comb and a guy Mm -hmm. had to um grab like pass the comb through the window and he used tongs to do it because he was like <laughs> afraid to get near her. yeah yeah get get over it you shouldn't steal someone's comb in the first place i'm not mm-hmm. sorry don't feel sorry for you well actually a lot of these stories tell you to use an item if you're gonna hand the comb back to her oh so you don't get touched well so there here's a quote from one of the stories the man handed out the comb on a spade and the banshee thinking the spade was his hand broke it into 
So <gasps> she's going to book you up if you mess with her comb. Okay. Gotcha. She's gotcha. like, I believe in vanity. I look good. Don't ruin my time. Let also, me don't fuck good. with me. Don't touch me. Back off. A lot of Banshee stories were cautionary tales. Uh, oh, that's what it is. A cautionary tale. Was the oh. thing I was... There it is. Uh, about bothering women who are out alone at night. Um, so if you try to grab or touch a banshee, she might slap you. And it's been said that she will, quote, leave the mark of her five fingers seared onto you forever. Oh, shit. <laughs> Which, like, you fucking deserve it. Yeah. Um, another time a man disrespected the banshee, she lifted him onto a windowsill and left him there for two days. Good. And when people tried to help him down, they actually couldn't do it. Even the fire department, because there was an invisible wall somehow <sighs> blocking them from getting to him. You've been punked. <laughs> she was like, I said, you're going to stay here. Mm-hmm. And that's that. And that's that. Apparently people have insulted the banshee and thrown, uh, or, and she has thrown her comb at you. And the comb, if she throws it at you, is like a fatal throw. Not like it's like an axe and she knocks your head off with it. But it's like a, it's a real um, indicator that you really <gasps> pissed her oh, off. It's like an omen. Mm-hmm. Like, I I'm going to throw my comb at you. The banshee's coming to get you. We're someone you love. Shit. And there have been stories where um, their family members have died the next day. <gasps> oh, no. That's terrible. A lot of stories, I, if, I mean, I feel like I'm just like uh maybe i'm over explaining but no no i love it uh, a lot of the stories discuss the danger of molesting a banshee so there's a lot of stories where men have touched her without their permission oh. and so basically it's all if you see a woman out late at night leave her alone yeah i like that moral yeah so so far i love the banshee and i'm so mad that she hasn't been mentioned more in yeah, my I life feel like she deserves a little more spotlight she would be running the feminist walks, like the marches. Absolutely. She'd be there for sure. Um, maybe she is there. Maybe she is. Honestly, if you hear like just like a a, a real cry, like just like a I'm proud a, to be here a cry. Disembodied keening. Feminist <laughs> feminist keening. Hopefully it's just a banshee really in her element. Um yeah. so another theory about the banshee is that um, so until the 20th century in Ireland and Scotland, there were actual keening women at funerals and their oh. whole job was to keen for the dead. Um, I don't know enough about that, but maybe I'm wrong. It sounds like if the person didn't have enough people there to that's cry for I've, them. I've heard that that's a thing. You could like have like, like body mourners, doubles. <laughs> like mourners yeah. to be at a funeral. Yeah. Okay. So yes. I mean, so, I don't know that that's what that is, but I have heard that that exists. So maybe... That's, that's the vibe I'm getting. So there yeah. were keening women at funerals. Um, and this is a quote about them. It says, Keens are said to have contained raw, unearthly emotion, spontaneous word, repeated motifs, and crying and elements of song. So they would do it all. They would sing. They would, you know. There's a 1975 interview of someone actually having childhood memories of Keens at funerals. Oh, wow. Who talked about them saying it wasn't just singing it wasn't anything you could describe it was a very melancholy chant rhythmic almost a spontaneous choir oh wow so oh, wow that sounds powerful so it sounds like you couldn't just audition to be a keener with like crying on cue like you yeah. had to you had there was more to it yes i can see that that's interesting so the theory is that banshees are the spirits of human keening uh, keeners <gasps> whoa oh interesting which i love that i don't know that's really cool i don't know if i love it but it makes sense to me compared to some of the other stuff yeah it's a really interesting idea so one person said that his own mom used to be a keener and believed that she might become a banshee when she died she said something Mm. like oh and you know i hope i don't become a banshee when when i go oh my some families had their own on-call keeners for family funerals. Oh, wow. Which I didn't even, I had no idea this was a whole career, but I guess y- you can find me in the book, you know? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, and so Banshees could be, this is a, a little more detailed, but I do like the sentiment in some way. Some families had their own on-call keeners and Banshees, another theory is that they could be those keeners coming back to cry for the family name so they may be oh. keeners returning to wail for descendants of the same family Ooh, um, interesting and basically only when that family line dies out does the banshee disappear 
Oh my gosh. So That's she's really interesting. working nine to five, even after For death. For real. She's like, the second I know of a death, I'm on call. So Girl. that kind of sounds like a, that actually sounds a little bad. <laughs> it sounds like, like a purgatory, like you're still working. Like a lot of work. Um, another theory is that Banshee might be your own ancestors coming back to announce a family death. <gasps> I like that. I do too. It's like you're stick keeping it in the family. Yeah, sticking it's sort together. of like just a warning. It's like someone we both love is not yeah. going to be here for much longer, I or someone we're like both that. connected to. It's almost touching in a way. So uh, there's a, a quote that I had never heard of before, but apparently banshees are known to quote follow the max and the o's do you know what that means the max and the o's no so those it's it's supposedly that banshees are connected to old irish families who all all their names were max (gasps) or o's oh that's funny o'brien mcdonald Um, okay i like that a lot i like that a lot I'm Max and that. O's. There should I, Ireland get Ireland on the phone. You guys need a mac <laughs> and cheese get option. Horn. Get a mac and cheese option for uh like a craft mac and cheese box, and I would like the theme to be Max and O's, and it's just macaroni <gasps> and cheese in the shape of O's. Okay. Eva, so SpaghettiOs meets mac and cheese. Anyway. I'd write that down, Eva, please. Do what you Thank need you. to do, Ireland. Yep. I am rooting do for your you. thing. Call it the 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 Banshee. The Banshee. Hmm. We'll shop it. The Banshee mm. something. Banshee's breakfast. Oh, we're done. Okay. Banshee's. Oh, no. The... I'm sorry, everybody. We're moving on. So uh, Max and O's, yes, they're supposedly the old families of Ireland. And so if there's a there's a theory that the Banshees only follow the older families of Ireland. And even if you immigrate to another country, if you're still part of the Max or O's bloodlines, the Banshee will be able to announce your death. And it's almost a social privilege of, oh, I come from one of the longest standing families of ireland and so I that's see. why some people experience the banshee and others don't and even <sighs> if last names change you might not know you're connected to one of the oldest families and so it would make oh, a lot of wow. sense why it's so random yes it would mm-hmm. i like that a lot actually it's just such a fascinating concept that it goes through generations i love it i also yeah. really like my max and O's idea for the food for the- well okay i um yeah just saying yeah uh so she might appear to um another thing that's because i was saying it's weird that she shows up randomly is some people might say well i'm a single mom like why is she coming to me or um you know she shows up for the sick and the elderly but sometimes she'll randomly cry for an accidental death so there i mean there's so many stinking theories about who the banshee is or if there's multiple banshees maybe it's not just one yeah um they are rarely heard of outside of ireland um, there actually is one story just to represent for you. There's one story from 19th century Ohio that hey. claims that <laughs> they claim that several Irish spirits, including a banshee, just lived nearby. Just <laughs> did I or did I not tell you Ohio is some sort of weird ass portal for everything, like cryptids and I, apparently banshees. It's like, oh my god, this place they can't stop. Well, you know what's interesting is that they're thought process to why all these irish spirits all of a sudden showed up in ohio is because maybe someone immigrated there from an old family (gasps) so maybe they were following them to ohio okay that's very interesting should i look up all the max and o's in the in town and see (laughs) yeah do that okay that won't take but a minute take a Um, few minutes (laughs) (laughs) um but so I do like that idea, and it would explain why even in other areas, even though it's rare, if someone claims that they experience a banshee, maybe you're part of a bloodline. So, Interesting. Uh, uh, not only has the banshee said to follow immigrants, but she might also still report back to the family in Ireland. So even if you leave, your family in Ireland will hear if you've passed. Aww. There are stories of people hearing a wail in Ireland and then a few weeks later getting letters that their family overseas Aww, passed away. Oh, that's sad. So here, um, before I end things real quick, I wanted to give you a few quick little stories about Banshee encounters from the Irish Folklore Commission. Shout out to them. And this is one story of a girl named Eddie, and she heard a Banshee crying nearby and went to go see what it was. She didn't know what the sound was, and she found a woman combing her hair. Mm. She thought that the woman was going to steal something or hurt her. She felt in danger because the woman was hiding. So she ran after her with a stick, shouting to go away. 
which means she had insulted it. Shit. So the woman ran off into a tunnel and Eddie lost sight of her. And when she got home, she told her mom what happened. And her mom was like, homie, that was a banshee. And soon after, Eddie died. And (gasps) Eddie died in a pretty tragic way. She was burned to death. Shit. For insulting the banshee, I guess. Eddie didn't know. Another story is of a girl named McKenna. Um, and her sister was dying. Um, and one night, the two of them and the rest of their group were sitting around a fire. And all of a sudden, they heard something pass by and then this awful scream. So they mm. thought, oh, God, what what happened? So their brother goes to check. Um, but there's nothing there. The screaming has stopped. And when he comes back, it's almost like a mind game. All of a sudden, the screaming starts again. Oh, boy. He goes back to check and it stops. He comes back to say nothing's there and it starts happening again. It happens all night until uh, eventually, here's the creepy part, as he would come back and the screaming would start again, every time it felt like it was getting closer to them. Oh, ah, that's horror movie stuff. Eventually they realized it was a banshee. It went on all night and by morning, uh, McKenna's sister had passed away. Oh, that's sad. So I'm just warning them all night long that it was coming. Yeah. Um, another story is that there was one night there was this guy named John and he was walking home and past his neighbor's house uh, where he saw the banshee in a tree combing her hair. So I guess okay. in this story, she is not one foot tall um, okay. or he has <laughs> fucking eagle eyes. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he just got new glasses. <laughs> and so he looks at her and he allegedly says good night but because she doesn't speak back to him i'm assuming he said something grosser i feel like there was a cat calling thing involved but he says good night to her she does not say anything back to him honestly he could have said good night because there's a lot of creepy guys out there who just try to find an opener yeah he said he said good night she didn't say anything he said good night again she didn't say anything and eventually he was so disrespected that he said to her whoever you are i will make you speak and then he goes home to get his dog, which like, who do you think you are, you little shit? If he started with a dog, she might have said hi, to be clear. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> she she's ready like, to talk to the dog, not yeah. this guy. Uh, so he, she comes back and the dog <sighs> wouldn't get near her. The dog is scared of her now. So <sighs> he goes back to get his gun. What and an what to an what? Idiot. To hold her at gunpoint to, to say goodnight to you? Seriously. Wow, you win. Grow up. So when he comes back, uh, she's gone. She's missing. A few mm-hmm. days later, uh, because she had been sitting outside one of his neighbor's houses, she was sitting out there kind of looking inside the house. Mm-hmm. A few days later, one of the neighbors died. Oh. And that night, the whole countryside heard the wails of the banshee. And somehow in this story, John somehow got away with insulting the banshee and nothing touched him. Yeah. That's I feel weird. like that was a moment, girl, where you absolutely had the right to do whatever we you wanted about that. We would have backed you on any decision you had there, but... I guess okay. she was gone before she saw that like he was going to threaten her life with a gun so it maybe she didn't like he was already pretty nasty toward her yeah i don't know what her maybe I don't know. his punishment was that everybody in town knew he had uh that's a good point the banshee that's a good point because the story has passed on so yeah it's like social punishment i don't know yeah hopefully and at, at the very least we're not even hearing about like general karma i hope something kicked his ass yeah. So, uh, and then I'll I'll end on this. But fun fact: there's one neighborhood that has a stone called the Banshee Chair. Mm. Uh, it's it's a random stone that's in town, and this neighborhood claims that whenever you see, uh, whenever someone in the area dies, uh, the Banshee will sit and cry in the Banshee Chair. Oh. Um. Just more proof that you know. They they either witness her or think she's there, and wow. So. Anyway, that's the banshee. I don't know if she's much of a an escort to death, but she's definitely, like we said, the town crier. What so. a tale. Literal crier. I mean, oh, yeah. Why did we even <laughs> add, add, add on to that? She's the literal town crier. You said the word crier, and I was so excited as if I never heard that word before, but she's literally a crier. <laughs> it is. So. It's just like literally what she is. I love it. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, that's the banshee. Good job, Em. Thank you. That was a good one. Uh, wow. 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 How to follow that up? Well, I guess the only <laughs> way I can really follow this up, Em, is to tell you a little bit about Stockholm Syndrome. <gasps> Thank you. I'm so excited. Is this actually a story or are you just doing yeah. like a 
I'm oh. doing the origin of Stockholm syndrome and the psychology behind it. So um, it's not. That's what I was asking. I was like, so this isn't like an actual it's like both. K- Kate. Oh, there's also a case that you're going to be. That's where the name comes from. From the from this case, I'm going to tell you. Aha! I see. Okay, because yes. I actually, you know, what I would like to hear every now and then, which maybe I'm totally alone in this, but just to broaden your topic horizons, if you ever don't feel like doing a case, I would love to just hear you do like informational reports on like how like on topics like Stockholm syndrome like oh how'd that come to be or like a while ago we said there was another one what was the one I did about um people who are people who are like really infatuated with serial killers and like a romantic or who write to write to criminals I love I love that stuff I mean they they sound like English papers sometimes of like and then this thing happened and then this thing happened but I I just like information so I yeah, happy- no and I, I like those topics too especially because they do relate to crime so it's like you get both you get like yeah. the story of it but you also get like the original so if you ever feel like you just can't handle something super dark but you want to cover a topic well, I'm you, so open that. to that yeah okay I will um I will ponder if you folks send in your ideas. I, I'd love to know what other people want to hear about. Um, uh, they're all going to write in and go, please don't do that. That's no, the worst I know, idea. Like, don't listen to him. <laughs> no, <laughs> but that one time when but it's you important su- to know if we're going to, if the, Hey, we're part yeah. of the true crime community. We need to be educating ourselves on things besides just like stories that feel removed enough for some people. Like, yeah, I mean, it, I feel like well even, know. yeah. When we talk about like stalking, I try to go over like, you know, the, the, the tips and tricks and you know all that good stuff so i think it's definitely relevant um but yeah very, this is very important so the origin of stockholm syndrome the case that created the term and the psychology behind it and this is actually a two-parter because it is <laughs> uh quite a case like quite a dramatic case and if you're if you're sitting here going i don't want to listen to like an a term paper it's not it's it's an actual crime case that happened in Sweden, get it? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Real quick, can I plug my computer in? I'm sorry. I was about to say, can I get a... I'm going to grab myself a little snacky real quick. Okay, good, good. Okay, hang on. Stand by. We have to step away and go get wine. Answer the door. We just... I have some very stale Cheerios next to me. Ooh, I'm... Listen, stale Cheerios are a part of my life now with a, with a toddler. They Steel never Cheerios. left, and I don't have a kid. I love Cheerios. I That's think they're so good. That's me and my Nutella. It's like, you know, some snacks just stay for the long haul. Christine, very important question. What was your go-to flavor of Cheerios growing up? Because I went through phases. Oh, interesting. I'm a honey nut gal. I have honey nut with me right now. I think as I'm getting older, I'm learning to appreciate the honey nut. But when I was a kid, frosted all the way. Really? And then my, and then my mom was on a diet, and so she thought getting the multigrain ones was like a well, thing. I know. So I ate multigrain a lot. But if I had a choice, it was frosted. And now as an adult. What? I was just going to say, I don't mind plain, which is probably weird. But like with milk, I don't mind a plain Cheerio. I was going to say, now as an adult, my go-to midnight snack is plain Cheerios with milk. It's like weirdly comforting somehow. You know what's fucking great, which I've probably said to you before. Do you know what my favorite cereal is? And it's so Raisin boring. It's, at, it's on par. Um, Crispix. Crispix. I fucking love Crispix. I think I'm the reason. I think I'm the reason Crispix still exists. You know, I don't know if I've ever even really. I like. I know what it is. It's like the the yeah. But I don't know if I've ever even had a Crispix. I gotta say, I'm a Crispix. I'm a honey gram all the way. I just love a honey gram. gram? Oh, they're fucking great. Are you kidding me? What's your now as an adult? What's the childhood? I'm sorry. I didn't mean honey gram. I meant golden grams. I knew what you meant. Honey Graham is a cream You're thinking, cracker. You you combined it with Honey Smacks. <laughs> I think I combined it with Honey Graham crackers. Graham oh. crackers. <laughs> honey Smacks, I never understood. That was my Blech. dad's favorite. And I was Hate like, what? Smacks. In the 60s? No thanks. Get them out of here. I love a Golden Graham. I love a Frosted Flake. I love a Reese's Puffs. I love a See? Cereal. None of those for me. I love... Really? Mm-mm. Not what about even Reese's honey Puffs. Nut, what about... Not Honey Nut Cheers. What about... um. Honey bunches of oats. That's my other favorite. No, where where did what you learn to happening? eat cereal? No, I see. I can understand Reese's puffs because I went through the phase, but I can't do it now. It's too sweet now. But I, like, if I had to get like a, I'm calling it kids cereal, but that's stupid. It, like, if I were to get like a sweet, a sugary cereal, a sugary cereal, um, back when the chocolate was really good in cereal, it was always yeah. either Cocoa Puffs or Count Chocula. But it's really been it's what a downhill. 
like collapse for chocolate. Man, now I it's feel like so dis- lucky, diff- lucky charms or tricks is my Blech. new thing. My least favorite. Those are the only two I can't stand. Really? I, I love, love tricks. A Cocoa Krispies though, like that. Really a crispy, I can always do. Chocolatey, that's good. My, um, I always do crispies. I do tricks or I do crispix. Those are the main three that are in not our a tricks fan. Not a crisp. peanut butter Captain Crunch. Now that'll oh, get good. your socks that's good. off. We can agree. With some banana sliced in there. Okay, you really. <laughs> took me. <laughs> that's where we diverge. Two roads diver. Two podcasters diverge in the cereal aisle. All right. Okay. Well, back to this. Okay, let's talk about Stockholm syndrome after this inserted ad that was not an ad <laughs> for general mills and general we have mills like only no self-control we also just advertise like probably six different brands at, that are competing all kellogg's is pissed yeah. yeah no i'm sure they were in there too listen um wow okay so back to stockholm syndrome uh let's do it so a lot of this information comes from a book, actually, which was written in 2020 or published in 2020. Uh, the author is David King, and the book is called Six Days in August. And I'm pretty sure they're actually making a film adaptation of this. So, oh, wow. um, And I, I, I've also watched a docu-series about um, st- this this exact case. But for the life of me, I could not remember what series it was. What- show it was on so i'll try and find that and if i do we can put it in the show notes but um this book six days in august is basically the first comprehensive telling of these events oh wow and uh the author david king interviewed all four hostages uh along with police and the criminals involved because this is a very like complex layered story in other words Mm -hmm. get your gargoyles ready because oh shit okay there's a lot of like um there's a lot of it's not it's not too many moving parts, but it's just very layered um, of a story. Gotcha. And my gargs are ready. The gargs are ready. Get your three D printer out because <laughs> I'm going to need more than four. More. <laughs> That's actually good. I feel like we'll get to it, but four is a good a good amount to have for now. Okay, so, cool. Let's start off with just addressing the big elephant in the room. What is Stockholm syndrome? So, according to the Cleveland Clinic. Stockholm syndrome is a psychological response to being held captive. People with Stockholm syndrome form a psychological connection with their captors and begin sympathizing with them. But this is already where it becomes more nuanced because Stockholm syndrome is not necessarily just about captors and captives. Cleveland Clinic says the diagnosis can extend to victims of any trauma who bond with their abusers. Mm, So it's not just like you're being held as a hostage. You can also have this experience with so an abuser i was gonna say is this i don't i don't know i don't know what the answer is and maybe you don't either but does that mean like if you were ever in an abusive relationship when you're like oh well i don't want to break up with them because you know they they're having a really it's a very minimal version but like oh they're having a bad day and i feel bad for them and they they didn't mean to do this to me they were just having a, a bad day like yeah pr- essentially it's pretty exactly so like I mean, a gradual step into stockholm syndrome of like kind of um i think just the notion of um of any notion of siding with your mm, captor okay. slash abuser it, it counts i'm i'm and truly I'm, believing it and really feeling like no yeah exactly uh and and actually it's really interesting because um some people think that the psychological response is a coping mechanism to survive uh, the trauma and abuse. Sure. Um, and so it's sort of a coping mechanism in terms of saying like, just like rewriting the, the script in your mind, almost like uh, siding with the person who's hurting you when from the outside, it doesn't seem to make sense. Sure. Um, there are a lot of theories about why some people experience this trauma response while others don't. Um, and this is probably one of my favorite fun facts about this topic. Some people believe that this is an evolutionary mechanism. Oh. Because for as long as humans have existed, there's been a risk of being captured by another social group, a warring mm. nation, um, a different tribe, that kind of thing. And so it may be coded into our ancient instincts to bond with our captors. Uh, ooh, it gives me goose cam. Such a wild concept. I hadn't even thought about that, but that makes total sense. It does, because, I mean, we do relate a lot of that, like, ancestral uh, evolutionary stuff to modern day, like, when it comes to... Uh, speaking in public like they believe Mm -hmm. that that's so terrifying because we don't want to be outcast from our 
social group because that means death you know uh like in the old in the old times um, well, especially so. under the guise of like self-preservation or yes. survival yeah it makes total exactly. sense exactly oh well, let like, me assimilate our still yeah. think that like our lives are at stake if we get you know kicked out of our social group or what have you that um, actually makes it a lot more palatable to um it makes more sense with under that theory why it's it's so common to happen because it's just it I know it's such a, maybe not a stupid thing to think, but no. I think I've never put that together. And so it makes sense now, like, oh, well, of course it happens to so many people because it's just a really, a larger, a more macro version of like trying to just fit in for yes, the sake yeah. of survival. Yeah. It's sort of your sense. survival instinct. And I, again, this is just a theory as to why this happens, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and so it's not only... Uh, theorized to be a survival uh instinct but also perhaps to just find happiness in your new life if you can't get back to your old one so just a way for your mind to say to adapt and say mm -hmm. this is my life now and i'm fine with it you know makes and sense. like genuinely convince yourself makes um, sense and so all this is very compelling but here's the truth stockholm syndrome is not actually a legitimate medical condition what yeah so there was a 2007 literature review uh, called Stockholm Syndrome, colon, Psychiatric Diagnosis or Urban Myth, where researchers looked at case reports involving Stockholm Syndrome, and they just could not find enough evidence-based science to prove it's real. Um, in mm. other words, there just isn't any consistent diagnostic criteria, like there aren't enough clear symptoms and traits to point to to say this person has is exhibiting XYZ and therefore they have Stockholm syndrome. So they just were not able to develop wow. like a strong enough um, diagnosis. So interestingly enough, uh, a lot of what we consider Stockholm syndrome is probably just a mixture of traits from other actual diagnoses like trauma bonding oh. or PTSD, uh, kind of Frankenstein together to form like what we now call stockholm syndrome okay it's sort of like too vague of a term if that makes sense like they're just not able to narrow it down into um parameters that they can diagnose people with so they just weren't able to gotcha label okay. it as a real condition um but it probably is just kind of a mishmash of all these other coping mechanisms that people uh exhibit when they're facing trauma interesting yeah that's hard to swallow but okay. yeah and you know what i actually had heard this the first time i'd really th looked into this was i think it was either last year or the year before when i covered when i was writing the chapter on elizabeth smart for the book mm -hmm. and i remember re-listening to um an old episode of ours which is when i covered it like episode it was within the first 10 episodes i think and um I remember her mother, Elizabeth Smart's mother, saying, like, she did not have Stockholm Syndrome. You know, oh. that's not... It. And she was very adamant about it. And I remember feeling... And, like, she was saying, Stockholm Syndrome is not real. She does not have that. And I remember thinking, like, that's so odd. Because wouldn't that explain why she went along with it? But I guess now looking at it, it's sort of like... Just because these were her survival instincts to right. go along with her captors and stuff doesn't mean she had like some psychological condition like maybe she really was just had a strategy <laughs> she yeah had... that yeah or or was just dealing with her trauma in some way I, i'm not really sure but that was the first time i'd ever heard that well that's double interesting because when you say stockholm syndrome my first thought is elizabeth smart exactly and i wonder if that's why they've you know her mom has been so open about saying like i don't that's not what it is i you yeah. know i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure um but Anyway, all that aside, uh, we're going to hop into what Stockholm Syndrome actually comes from, like what, where the term comes from. So the suppo supposed criteria for having Stockholm Syndrome often creeps into like bias, a very biased territory, which is another reason that um, it's hard to put parameters on it. So, sure. for example... Um, the FBI might say that a symptom of Stockholm syndrome is having negative feelings toward authorities, but it's like, well, maybe that's warranted and it's mm. not necessarily psychological. Like, I mean, in the story we're going to cover, you can see pretty clearly why the hostages have negative feelings toward the police. Right. 
because they're like fumbling their case basically and like risking their safety. So it seems like it's not, it's hard to put your finger on, in other words. Mm -hmm. So the original Stockholm Syndrome case, pretty complicated, but uh, very fascinating. So August 23rd, 1973, a man burst into a bank in Normalm, oh my gosh, here we go, Normalmstorg <laughs> Square. Oh God, okay. <laughs> this is in Stockholm, Normalmstorg Square in Stockholm, Sweden. He was armed and wearing makeup, a woman's wig, and blue sunglasses. Okay. He shot a few bullets into the air and shouted, the party starts. <gasps> oh, my God. Fucking terrifying. Oh, right? my God. Oh, my God. Just, ooh, chill. Ugh. So this dramatic entrance kicked off a six-day hostage standoff between two criminals and the police with four hostages caught in the middle. Six days this went on. 32-year-old Jan Eric Olsen walked into the bank that morning with two desires. The first of which was he wanted 3 million Swedish krona, which would be 4 million today. And um, I believe that means 4 million krona today. And the equivalent of that in U.S. dollars today is $380,000. Okay. So okay. about four 400 grand. Yeah, about 400 grand uh, in today's currency. And the second thing he wanted is he wanted police to free his friend Clark Olofsson, who was serving time in prison for one of his most recent crimes. Okay. So he wants three million krona on the one hand, and then he also wants his friend Clark out of jail. That's, that's a big ask. That's yeah. like, I mean, to I feel like when you go to, um, I mean, I know they're unhinged currently, but if you're a, a robbing a bank, I imagine you, I mean, I guess I don't know how much is in a bank, but I feel like you would request the amount that you think the bank could offer you like up an front. accessible amount right and i feel like <laughs> half a million dollars is maybe not just sitting at the bank and but also all... like think about how heavy that is that's so like yeah how are you gonna walk out of here with half yes. a million four hundred thousand of... dollar bills what in that the world? seems like a lot and well and and, imagine and if it's in coin for i was gonna form. say and remember it's in krona which is three million so three million bills well I'm you sure better it have be in dollars but or i in hope single you've got bills. a u-haul out back jeez <laughs> well like also, He's like, on and top a of third that, third thing, put a U-Haul out back for no <laughs> I, reason. <laughs> I want a U-Haul. I want basically half a million dollars, and also and release my friend from friend. jail. <laughs> like that's a lot to ask. Like it just seems. Again, I know like they're clearly being beyond irrational right now, but I feel like that part you at least think through. Well, just Whatever. buckle up because it gets. You're gonna be shook by bewildered. Some, some, okay, some, you're gonna be bewildered by some of this. Okay. So let's get into the friend, Clark, who's in jail, right? Mm -hmm. So you said earlier he's in jail for probably a reason. Like, he's probably there he's for a probably reason. probably been convicted on something, yeah. On something. And you are exactly right. So Clark, he actually was a well-known criminal. He was considered a, like a bad boy of his time. Mm. Um, he was born into a troubled home, and at 14 he, became, he had become a sailor and traveled the world. And when he came back to Sweden, he started getting into petty crimes. Um, for example, he would sneak onto the Swedish prime minister's property and steal grapes from his greenhouse. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so he was, but, okay, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I've I stolen grapes from the grocery store, to be clear. So. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. I imagine like just a bag. couple. Yeah, you just like, you grab Pop like two them. and you're like, mm, this bag isn't good. And then you try another bag, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you try another one, another one, another one. Right, and then eventually <laughs> you've eaten you've eaten lunch, you know? <laughs> eventually you're in prison and I have to go rob a bank to set you free. I mean, if God. it's for grapes, I really hope that as a, as a first offense, they would let me go. But I don't I know. Hope, Who knows? I hope. Who it knows? doesn't sound like your first offense if it's about grapes, but <laughs> okay. anyway. So in 1973, 26-year-old Clark had just ser started serving a six-year sentence in a Swedish prison. And by this point, after his, like, grape, grape, uh, thievery, The grape escape. The grape escape. <laughs> he had already achieved national notoriety for crimes like theft, prison break, bank heists, forgery, and attempted murder. Jeez. And so, yeah. And so what you'd think automatically is like, oh, this guy must be public enemy number one. But no, because the police were really fumbling the optics here because oh the issue was Clark was super hot. <laughs> like he was super hot? 
hot, like super handsome. And really, so, well, yeah, I want to find a picture so, of him. What's he well, look like? Now, you know, now I'm worried because I always get so nervous when I call people attractive and then they look them up and go, "What are you talking about?" No, no, no. But if you think he's hot, he's probably a gay man because I know your type. <laughs> that but... seems to so be. So what's my... his name? Clark what? Clark Olafson. Do you want me to send you a picture? I got it. I got it. Clark Olson. We can definitely send a... We'll put a picture in the Geo's. Oh, he looks too. exactly like... um The guy who played It, Bill something. The guy who played Bill something? Oh, no. That was just a weird picture of him. Hang on. The guy who... No, the guy who played in the movie It, he played the clown. His name's Bill something. Oh, I um, don't know. But that was just... Yeah. Hang on. You know, he just had that kind of air about him. Hang on. Bill... Scars guard. Wait, that, been... that's who's playing him. Wait, really? That might be what we've accidentally stumbled upon. Well, that's he's a... playing him in he plays him in a mini series, um, a Swedish mini series. Oh, maybe I found just a picture of so it might have literally guard. been him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I'm seeing different pictures of someone okay, who's also named Clark this Olson. Is why and I offered just... to send a photo. I'm gonna send one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I did already send one. Oh, did you in Geo's Did you see it? Yeah. So Hang that on. was just kind of, he has that kind of like swagger of like. Aha, uh-huh. not Bill Skarsgård. He, okay. he can't catch me, you know. Yeah, he does have a bit of like a, it's the mustache. It's he always the mustache. He has that air about him, but it's also the eyes where he's kind of looking at you like, uh-huh, what are you going to do about it? I mean, from the nose up, good looking dude. But then I feel like mustache to the mustache really patchy doesn't goatee. Do it. But you got to remember it was the 70s. So like you know right he i'm sure he maybe if i saw a smile but you know whatever he's handsome he's for he's a mugshot where he's all beaten up like he's he's looking pretty yeah, pretty he's okay. looking fine he's looking all yeah. right so in any case um clark olifson uh he is a good looking dude and he's also charming as hell he knows how to pull out these one-liners he is weirdly photogenic very snarky with authority and he like nailed his one-liners and so people (laughs) ate up his interviews and were like he became like a folk hero basically in sweden like people uh just loved him in fact news one newspaper named him among sweden's top 10 most influential people like, oh, that's wow. how beloved that's, this guy was. This is feeling a little uh, gross so far. Yeah. So the reason that people seem to uh, admire him so much was that he he never harmed civilians. Like he never oh, hurt okay. anybody. It was sort of like a Robin Hood. He, he got like a Robin Hood um, reputation uh, because he was robbing banks and refused to hurt people in the process. It's sort of like that gentleman robber I talked about back uh-huh. in the day. <laughs> um, so at least we're not like, we're not like, I don't know if sexualizing, we're glamorizing. We're not glamorizing like someone who has physically like harmed people. Out to hurt people. Yeah. And he's definitely like doing bad things. So don't get me wrong, but right, people right, right. just appreciated that while he was kind of, he was like a bad boy without going too far. Like he's, without te- he's harming good looking and people. technically harmless. Very technically yeah, harmless. Yeah. Technically harmless, depending so, on how you define harmless. Really? Okay. Um, I, I, I get it. I got it. I got it. He had been known to shoot at police, but like never <laughs> shot somebody. So it was like, well, we'll let it slide. Maybe he was thought. missing on purpose to look. Yeah. At, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So they, yeah. Yes. That was kind of the vibe. People were like, well, he just doesn't want to hurt anyone and he's so handsome and funny and like charming you know he just had that like vibe um so anyway it was not overly shocking to anybody that he had this theatrical friend jan uh who was ready to risk his own life to rescue him from prison Mm -hmm. so jan himself was a master safe cracker with a history of his own bank heist and he and clark had become friends in prison and so once he was out he was like okay i'll get you out buddy i'll rob a bank and i will negotiate with police and we will get you out of prison that's the plan wild because if you just got out of jail for a bank heist why on earth would you risk going back to jail for a bank heist? exactly exactly quite a bold fucking move So the police were on scene so quickly once this uh, guy walked in and started shooting in the ceiling Mm -hmm. that people assumed, okay, his plan was a bust. He's going to go on the run. But no, he had other plans, big plans. He shot toward police and actually hit one of them in the hand. And so now they knew this is like high stakes, very dangerous. He's armed. Uh, And he then says, 
I would like to talk to someone with authority. So Jan made a male employee named Bo Nielsen tie up four women in the bank to take as hostages. Then he told Bo to go find the police so he could open negotiations. So Bo went out as like the spokesperson and wildly the police said to Bo, okay, uh, go back down and tell Jan that we uh, will negotiate with him. And Bo was like, no, (laughs) I just walked out here to safety. I feel like what year was this? 73. So I'm just wondering, like, what on earth was the hostage protocol at the time to be like, oh, tell the I don't think the there guy was go, one go back necessarily. Into... Uh-huh. OK, sure. At least not in Sweden, maybe. And I will say Sweden was known as a very peaceful, progressive country right. and maybe still they never, is. So maybe I think they never even thought of it. This isn't something I think that was like a normal occurrence there. But that's also like then in that case, like maybe that's why they thought like, oh, he'll be safe even though he's walking yeah, back just, into. He'll be fine. He's not yeah. going to hurt you. It's a safe place. This guy's clearly for show. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's exactly what it was. And I think you're getting ex- you're getting right into the uh, heart of the matter, which is that the police started really bungling things up front because mm. they were risking all these civilians' lives. So it becomes pretty easy to see why the hostages turned on the police and said, like, you guys are the ones who are putting us at risk. I see. You okay. know? Got it. And so this is just the beginning of that. So basically, the police, Bo gets out. He escapes as one of the hostages escapes. And then they tell this hostage Go Why back. don't you go back in there and talk to him? And he's like, no, that's not my job. It's like, I'm sorry, job. but there's now one less hostage in there. You want yeah, me to make it you... a, 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 you want me to break even again? To go back? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So they wanted this random bank employee to go tell Jan to put his weapons down and surrender as if that was going to go over very well. So Bo obviously said no way in hell. And he retreated to safety. Thank God. So now Jan was in there with his three hostages, 31-year-old Birgitta Lundblad, 21-year-old Elizabeth Oldgren, and 23-year-old Kristen Enmark. And he actually specifically chose these three women because he thought police would hesitate to shoot at women, especially young women. Mm. So they're 21, 23, and 31. Jan then moved the hostages to the bank vault where he felt he was safe from the police and where it would be difficult for the hostages to escape. And weirdly enough, this whole time he was speaking English to the hostages. So they were kind of confused about where he was from. So in the 70s, like I kind of mentioned briefly a minute ago, Sweden was making international headlines as a socialist country renowned for its safety, free health care, free education, progressive stance on women's rights, robust welfare system. Uh, Swedish people thought of themselves as peaceful and progressive. It's just, you know, it was considered just like a wonderful, peaceful, happy place to live. Uh, and so the hostages, when they're encountering this violent robber and he's speaking English, They're Mm. thinking, well, this guy's not Swedish. Right. So they thought he was just a foreign terrorist. Okay. However, he was a Swede. He was just speaking English to conceal his identity. Oh, Uh, okay. He didn't want them to know he was one of their own, I guess. Mm -hmm. So along with his makeup and wig, he really just pulled off this different identity. Even police assumed he was a totally different person. Uh, They could not figure out who the hell he was, even though he had really just been in jail for bank robbery. They couldn't couldn't place him, you know. They couldn't just like look up a record or anything. No, couldn't fit, could place him. So, of course, pretty immediately, the situation became a media frenzy. People were gathering around the bank to watch it unfold. And up to 73 percent of the entire country was watching this story unfold on the news, especially through radio shows. And um and this is where you're going to get bewildered, okay? okay? So in one of the first of many controversial decisions, police agreed to one of Jan's demands. Okay, which one? The half a million dollars or letting a uh, convict out? They decided to release Clark from prison to join Jan in the bank. Shut the fuck up. Wait, I hang on. I am not kidding you. So now they've got two people that are against them. Why? Yes! Did they ever release like a an explanation? 
not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> he went, well, I don't know. I guess he would have. We he thought said it would that's work. what he wanted. Oh, my God. So oh they literally God. get him out of prison and deliver him to the bank to join his friend in this hostage situation. It's not even like, oh, we released him and he's safely at home and free. You can go hang out with him now. It's it's oh, well, let's bring now him he's here. He's part of this. <laughs> let's add another criminal to the mix. Okay. Yes. yes. So, sure. Why not? Okay. Several officers stood inside the bank and spoke to Jan, attempting to keep him calm until Clark arrived, hoping it would keep the hostages safe from his kind of erratic mood swings. So Jan was clearly getting pretty stressed under the pressure of negotiations. He was controlling his hostages. He was trying to stay out of the line of fire of police. And when Clark showed up, police told him this was his chance to do a good deed. They told Clark, we want you to convince Jan to release the hostages and surrender, which is also what they told Bo earlier. And Bo right. was like, fuck you. Like, like, <laughs> we'll, try, we'll try it with like, we'll try it with someone who's actually like not an upstanding citizen currently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And someone who also probably is going to side not... with this guy. Yeah. yeah he's not going to side with the police. And so they're like, this is your chance to do a good thing, which I'm sure spoke volumes to this guy. Okay, I guess they thought, I guess they thought like, well, we released you and now you owe us. And yeah. Maybe you'll do a favor for us. But he, I don't even know how they did. Flawed think, oh. logic. <laughs> so flawed. What are they? He's going to feel guilty that they let him out. I don't think so. Right. Um. So he, they tell him this is your chance to do a good G good deed. Um, at this point, again, they didn't really understand that who Jan was. And so they didn't realize that he and Clark were actually really good friends. Like they, they thought, <laughs> oh, maybe they just he just knows of him as like a folk hero and he wants him out of jail. But it didn't no. even click for them that maybe he had some sort of investment in the person he wanted out of nope. jail. Nope. They thought maybe he just saw him as like a folk hero. And Did they just wake up this morning? Like what happened? <laughs> like What's going on? Are they toddlers? What's going on? <laughs> Earth to Swedish police. Hello. So Clark, who also had already been known, fun fact, for several successful prison breaks, uh, was like, cool, cool, sure, yeah, I'll tell him to um, turn himself in and I'll go back to jail. Sure, whatever you, you say. You got it, boss. You got you it, boss. You got it, boss. <laughs> and uh, instead he walked in and said, this is a fucking great opportunity to grab some ransom money and go on the lam with my pal. Uh, wow, what a shocking twist. Mm -hmm. Not at all. <laughs> so over half the country was watching this in awe as police purposefully released a notorious and violent criminal into the bank to join Jan and his four hostages. <laughs> it's just what like on God's green earth. Are you kidding me? Totally batch it. So once Clark arrived, he promised Jan that he would keep his identity a secret. Uh, and he did. He never referred to him by name. So the, to the police to reveal who he was. Okay. For what it's worth, Clark's presence calmed Jan down. He stopped yelling at the hostages. He stopped arguing with the police. And this allowed the hostages to calm down a bit, too. Um, now that the general environment was a bit calmer and Jan's mood was stabler, they felt a little less threatened. And at this point, Clark convinced Jan to let him untie the women. And he told them all he told them all they were safe and they would go unharmed. They would go home unharmed as soon as the situation revolved. So he told them, you know what? I'm going to unshackle you. Go eat. You're safe. You're seeing now how, how they could have yes. sided with the with the guys. Yeah. It's, well, like, it's well so, at least these guys are aware of our safety. Like, they're, it, yeah. They're, they're like uh, more so than the police, at least. Yeah. The police are like, okay, well, now that we see that you're safe, go back inside where it's not safe and yeah. go report the news. And then these people are like, we're going to unshackle you. You're okay. You're safe. We you're, don't want to hurt you. And guess what? He said, why don't you go eat some food? The police brought some food for us. Go have a snack fill your tummies <laughs> like, i would immediately side with them talk and, like, about a way to your heart right <laughs> yeah but like not i mean like truly i would say i'd be like there i mean i would still obviously have my guard up and i'd be like very wary that there, this was a trick or something sure but like i'd be like damn like they're definitely making me feel better than the cops are right now yep 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 exactly and it who only have gets no worse. protocol for a hostage situation who don't seem to be following any sort of logical no sense protocol. of urgency nothing yeah no safety protocol at all 
Um, so he tells them, okay, the food, uh, the police had brought food during earlier negotiations. Um, he even brought a phone into the vault so everyone could call their families to chat and, and connect with their families and tell them they were okay. <laughs> Immediately, I would, I would just be... I don't know. I would at least be conflicted. I'd I think at least the be... sense of relief would at least be a big player. Like, I think I'd yeah. be at least relieved, like thankful that they didn't immediately har- harm me. Yeah. Yeah. So Brigitte's husband was still at work when she called and her mom didn't pick up. Uh, she started crying and Jan told her, don't worry that they didn't pick up. Just wait and you can try again in a few minutes. Mm. <laughs> so oh my God. Very patient with them. This the does women, feel like the gentleman robber. I mean, isn't this, it though? Yeah. yeah, it's like I'm sorry you got caught up in this. I, I mean, really, if they they should have, I know that they probably had to use hostages for like the dramatic flair. But I wish they had just done this like on a lunch break when like no one was there or something. You I know? know. But then they don't have any power because then I the know. police can just shoot in, and it's like That's they true. don't risk killing the hostages. You know? That's true. Um, the women were surprised that their captors arranged the calls uh, when police had offered no such thing. And in fact, some of the women's families didn't even know they were being held hostage <gasps> until they called, until the captors let them call home. Oh my and God. The authorities had not contacted their families to let them know their daughters and wives were being held hostage. Whew, so, wow. bad, talk about that would be bad look. Front page news today. Front the optics, page news. Not good. It's like the. The mom, the whoever is like, I'm sorry, you're what? You're being held hostage? Why is nobody told me? Can you imagine being a mother? Fine. I mean, you, hey, getting that call? mother, can you imagine someone just saying like, um, I'm literally a hostage right now in a bank robbery. And like, like nobody. And, and by the way, uh, my captor thought it was okay for me to tell you so that you're not too worried about my safety. It's and like, by the way, what? they're feeding me and the police aren't telling anyone. And the so. police are trying to send us back in here. Whew. So it was perhaps the first thing uh, that started winning them over to their captors' sides, this uh, this connection that they gave them to their families. Like giving them things that cops won't. Yeah. So six hours into the robbery, Clark found another employee who had been hiding in the bank. <gasps> oh, shit. Yeah. Is the, do, the th- do things take a turn? Uh, no. Oh, Not okay. Not quite. Not quite. He finds 24-year-old Sven Sofstrom hiding in another room. Uh, so when he had heard Jan's initial entrance, he decided to lay low until help arrived, but then quickly realized help was not arriving because this was a standoff. Oof. So Clark said, oh, you must be hungry. And he walked him back to the vault to join everyone else. And he told Jan, be kind to this man. Uh, it's like, this is Sven. Sven, <laughs> everyone. Sven, everyone. <laughs> Share your stale Cheerios yeah. with the class, okay? Um, again, Clark is now being painted, whether it's manipulative or not, is being painted in this positive light to all the hostages. Um, but again, Clark could have just let Sven leave and didn't. Just He knew the power of having another hostage on his hands. Um, and so Jan, again, did not know about this Sven guy in the other room. So Clark... Clark could have let him go and not told Jan about it. Um, But no, he figured having a fourth hostage was worth exploiting. So he brought this fourth hostage in. And I, this is a sidebar and maybe you're going to talk about it later. And this is not to sound victim blamey at all. I think it's actually like a fascinating, I feel like this part should be talked about more is like, now that everyone felt like these people weren't a threat, why didn't everyone in numbers like tackle them or something and get the gun out of their hands? You know, it's interesting that they were, they just felt safe enough. They didn't even feel the need to tackle them. You mean as the hostages? Yeah. The hostages. Yeah. Because I think at this point they feel like they're not like these people aren't even a threat. It sounds like to them. Yeah. But I think they feel like protected by these people more than, yeah, more than the police. Mm -hmm. Like they almost feel like, uh, the police are more of a danger to them at this point than the host- than the uh, hostage takers than the robbers because they're they're treating them kindly mm-hmm. and they do keep telling them like you'll go home as soon as this is over um and so i think they're starting to believe you know okay well they've they've 
gone th- followed through on all their promises they've been yep. feeding us being kind to us taking care of us like why um, rock the boat you know why rock the boat and like maybe they genuinely will let us out of here mm-hmm. uh so days went by full of failed negotiations and at this point oh my god the police they are just dropping the ball left and right they've decided that Jan is a man named Kaj or Kai. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. K-A-J. Okay. Uh, and they decide, okay, we have figured out who this is. By the way, again, just to clarify, it's not this guy. It's not Kai. <laughs> it's not Kaj. It's Jan, but they just haven't figured it out yet. Mm-hmm. So they decide to send Kai's 17-year-old brother <gasps> in to What on earth? Are you kidding me? So to they're re- just... To reason with him. They're just integrating more and more hostages into the situation and just think, like, do you think they're high-fiving outside by their police cars going, we did good today. We are doing good. Good job. Good idea. You know, it's like Family Feud, like, uh, good answer, good answer, even though it's like a fucking terrible answer. So, like, (laughs) that's going to get zero points, but good answer, good answer. So, question, in this movie, is it going to be, like, a comedy, like, (laughs) when it comes out? Because how on earth are they going to make this... You know, I don't know. Because this almost actually. feels like the, the Three Stooges or the police or something. Like I know they've already done a series on Netflix. I started it. It made me feel kind of weird. They they were doing some weird... Um, I don't know. It started with like a weird birthing scene where like he was like what? a full grown man as a fetus. And I was like, I don't love this. So I... That's actually Benjamin Button. You missed... I, you <laughs> I walked stopped. into the wrong theater. I, it felt like it. It felt like it. And I, I was just like, nah, I'm not feeling this. Um, So I'm sure... I'm sure the rest of the series is fine, but I just like couldn't get into it. But um, I don't know about this newer... This newer one. I wonder I wonder what the tone will be. Because it could be dramatic, and it ought to. I mean, it's definitely... I'm very aware that these people are still hostages in a bank robbery. But, like, if you're doing it from, like... Like, it wouldn't be hard to find a way to turn that into a comedy, at least, like, yes. with the bumbling cops. Like, oh, what's one more hostage? Throw the brother in there. Like, what? Totally. And, by the way, the brother of a person that's not in this bank. <laughs> like, oh. remember, they think it's... They think this they think guy it's, is but it's Kai, not. but it's not. It's a totally different man. So they send, by the way, a minor, a 17-year-old, into the bank to talk to his brother. And he's like, that's not my brother. Like, he goes in there and he's like, what the fuck? That's not my brother. Why did you send me in here? Oh, my gosh. If so- Olivia Benson were here... Oh my god, the entire oh, squad would be fired. We talk about a banshee. She would show up and <laughs> raise some fucking hell is what I got to say about that. That would be the uh, real crossover. Olivia Benson and a banshee. I take honestly, on a bank robbery. There's a there's a joke in there somewhere. I don't know if there's a joke, but there is a Oscar award winning film <laughs> in the making. <laughs> there's an Academy Award to be to be had, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, they send this 17-year-old boy in with his friend to reason (laughs) with Kai. But when they headed toward the vault, Jan, who was not their brother or friend, shot at them. Oh, my God. They retreated, and police told them, no, 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 try again. Yeah. They said, don't worry, he's not actually shooting at you. Trust me, says the guy with a bullet through his hand. Yeah. Yeah. And like, what does that even mean? They're not actually shooting at you. What? Okay. Okay. So they tried again and they got shot at again. And Clark shouted at them to stay back saying, can't you tell he's serious? Yeah. And Jan yelled that nobody named Kai was in the vault and they needed to leave. So now police are (laughs) hashtag embarrassed because (laughs) they've just risked more than two innocent lives, uh, seemingly at random. They hushed up the incident with Kai's teenage brother and friend. So that actually never really made the news. They were able to like put that on like on the They buried that one. They They buried buried that one for sure. So meanwhile, Clark is using the phone to contact his friends in the press because, remember, he is known as this kind of folk hero. Yeah. And so he has a little bit of sway in this in this media circus that's going on. 
And so several papers started publishing sympathetic articles painting him as an underdog, standing up to banks and their greed. Um, Many people felt he had a Robin Hood type air about him, and he Mm -hmm. was basically milking it for all it's worth. Then he called his buddy the prime minister. Remember the one (laughs) with all the delicious grapes in his... (laughs) Oh, yeah. I forgot about him. Yeah. So he called the prime minister... No one even verified the call or questioned his identity. He said, this is Clark Olofsson, and they just put him through to the nation's leader. They were like, <laughs> okay, he's available. Here you go. Can you imagine? I literally don't even know what that, I don't even know what that means. That sentence feels like something that came out of Parks and Rec or something. Like, it, <laughs> it makes no, it makes no sense. Uh, So meanwhile, police continued to move sharpshooters into the bank lobby, occasionally engaging in fire with Jan. The hostages at this point fully believe that the police are putting them in danger. Uh, Not only could they get caught in this like ongoing crossfire that's happening, but every time someone opened fire, Jan got more nervous and desperate. Mm. And he started talking about hurting one of the hostages to prove he meant business. Oof. Okay. So he's, is he turning on them? He's turning yeah, on them. Yeah, a little bit. And so the, the hostages are now getting mad at the police. They're like, every time you shoot at this guy, he's getting mad at us and threatening to, to hurt us because he's getting so nervous. Also, like, you're so scared to come in because you're afraid that he's going to shoot. Why do you have no problem aiming a gun at him while we're sitting here like come well, on we're in there like trapped yeah like you had no problem also telling the miner like oh go in he's not really gonna shoot at he's you shooting, it's like shooting at you if you really believe he's not gonna shoot at people then you walk in like, then, like this yeah, is not my job <laughs> he's fucking my bold job. and so excuse me oh am i boring you <laughs> yeah a little no <laughs> it's my own story okay <laughs> Um, So, like I said, every time uh, the shooting would happen, he would get more nervous and desperate and more frenzied and on edge. And so he started talking about hurting one of the hostages to prove he meant business. And Mm -hmm. he promised the hostages he wouldn't mortally wound anyone, but he said he would be willing to injure them, like shoot their hand, so to speak, or their foot or their whatever, to prove his point. So they're now at risk again. And Clark said uh, it had to be Sven, the man, if it came down to that, because he couldn't bear to hurt a woman. So Sven accepted this so readily and graciously. We love Sven. Wow. He was like, I don't want any woman to get hurt. By the way, like talk about a story for the rest of your life like that's that's so scary talk but about also a hometown hero you know yeah talk about honorable yeah yeah so he says i will step up if i if somebody has to get hurt it'll be me um he actually was so readily accepting of this that in interviews clark who was who had suggested shooting him remembers feeling deeply ashamed for even suggesting shooting sven in the first place <laughs> What a little <laughs> ragtag. This I I I understand that this is supposed to like teach us how Stockholm syndrome came to be, but like I already get it. Like it I'm, makes sense, right? It makes total sense. It like just sense. it's just a bunch of empathetic people and some of them were I mean some of them were definitely doing wrong things, like let's be clear. Like I have not forgotten that. But like to still have some empathy is like yes. you never hear about that in a story. And there's I mean there's that element of just like You know, you see the two threats to you, these criminals and the police, and you're like, well, which ones are making me feel safer? It's not the police. So sure, I'm going to side with these guys. Like, Like, I can see why that would happen. Which, like, that just shows you, like, how how little they were trusting either the police out there or the community in general. Because, like, the guy who's saying, I might have to shoot you through the hand, you're trusting him more? And, like, he, he at least feels guilty about it. Like, he's like, at least the guy who has to shoot you. I do hope that they had a conversation, by the way, beforehand, where they were like, how about you shoot the gun over there? And I scream and we wrap my hand and it looks like you shot me in my hand. that is genius. That way no one has, like, you can feel ashamed all you want, but like. We um, just pretend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, and That's really good. Any Anything to keep myself from getting shot is kind of <laughs> the I'm route sure that I'm going. The Swedish police are going to send you in in a minute. Why don't oh. you go talk to them? You have some great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so Clark and Jan, the two robbers, 
continued to demand the 3 million krona, and they also wanted to leave. This is their new demand. They want to leave with two of the women to ensure their escape. So they said, now we want to take two of them with us. Okay. Authorities refused to negotiate. So when another morning came, police asked to see the hostages to confirm their safety, and they were shocked to see the women were in good condition, but glaring at the police. Oh, glaring. So Kristen said she just couldn't understand why the police wouldn't let Clark and Jan leave with two hostages just to end the whole ordeal. On the phone, she told reporters that she genuinely trusted Jan and Clark, and she thought if they all left together with the ransom money, she would end up way safer than she was in the standoff. Mm -hmm. She was angry at police for repeatedly engaging Jan in open fire and putting all four hostages at risk. Mm -hmm. And when Kristen tried to talk to police, they shut her down. Uh, which was shocking to her and to the public. It seemed unbelievably cruel. Like she's the victim and she's trying to speak to them and say like, this is what needs to happen. And they are just completely shutting her down. But what Kristen didn't know is that Clark had previously told police not to talk to the hostages. Okay. He said too many negotiators would confuse and stress yawn out and get him riled up, and they were acting according to his demands. So they were basically shutting down, uh, shutting down conversations with the victims because mm-hmm. of that. So now Kristen felt Clark cared more about her thoughts and needs than the police did, because they're just shutting her out. He was successfully playing both sides, essentially being sure. manipulative enough to get the police to do what he wants, and also get the hostages to think he's on their side yeah Mm -hmm. however the hostages were also getting angry that they felt they weren't worth the ransom Jan demanded uh Mm. because they said if the police just handed over the three million their ordeal would be over but it just was not happening like they let this other criminal out of jail as part of the ransom demands but they won't give the three million so they were like so we're not worth that Right. As the hostages. We're not worth that. Okay. (sighs) Eventually, police offered to let the men leave with one of the hostages. They were like, we'll negotiate. Which also makes it sound like they're just commodities. Like, you can't take two of the hostages, but you can take one of the hostages. It's like, that's also not comforting. Not a cute look. Like, which one? Like, you're just going to send one of them off? And so they said, you can leave with one of the women, but the women refused to separate and send one of them with two criminals on her own. And they could not understand why police would not just listen to their desires since they were the hostages after all. Mm -hmm. So on the phone with more reporters, Elizabeth said she trusted Jan and Clark. She was only afraid of the police who might open fire and put everyone at risk again. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. So Clark and Jan felt trapped. If they didn't get their money and leave with two hostages, they would be going straight to prison. So they were kind of like stuck in this point. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, police also felt trapped. They said they couldn't possibly trust Jan and Clark on the loose with two innocent civilians. And people felt this would be a fair argument if police hadn't put Clark in the building to begin with. I was going to say, like, that's a that's almost makes sense, except you totally were fine. with. you're the reason that he's there. Yeah. You can't say, well, we don't know if they're safe with the two criminals when you put them in a room with two criminals. And now you're worried about putting them in a room with two criminals. Yeah. Amen. It's like, well, why is he even here? Oh, oh, wait. I remember. Right. You you shuttled him over. (laughs) So at one point, Kristen called the prime minister directly. This poor prime minister is getting like... (laughs) so many phone calls uh he's just trying to lounge in his grape garden or whatever the fuck i'm surprised he hasn't called anyone he's like can we not just have him directly have contact with me like can't someone take a message for me or something some but don't i have an assistant it's like no? why is he being perfectly right away being dispatched right just to my personal to the phone? source yeah yeah I was like, I've got a nation to take care of. This is yeah. embarrassing. I'm busy with my grape orchard. Okay. <laughs> Leave me alone. So Kristen called the prime minister directly. Also love that they all just happen to have his direct line. I know. Uh, it's like, what is he on speed dial? What from is going inside on? a vault. They're like, we have his line. <laughs> 
So I like called- that makes me think now that like Clark or whatever just like was now giving out the prime minister's number. He just number knew the this. number. He's like, we'll skip like, through the secretary. Oh, you don't talk to him? Oh, hang on. Maybe you just don't have his new number. Here, here's it is. Oh, here's his new number. Yeah, he gave yeah. it to me when I when he caught me in the grape garden the other day. <laughs> um, so she calls the prime minister directly and she criticizes him over the phone for playing chess with her life. Mm. He tried to defend his position and his reasoning, but she told him she now saw the police as the enemy for putting her in danger and failing to save her. Fair enough. In a later interview, Kristen says the prime minister asked her, would it not feel good to die at your post? Ooh. She was shocked, but the comment never made it onto the radio or TV. The prime minister denied ever saying it, but Kristen insists he did. And she says the phone call was edited to cut out several minutes of their conversation. And for what it's worth, no one involved in the recording has ever denied that parts have been cut out. So it's entirely possible to tell somebody, a young woman who works at a bank, wouldn't it feel nice to die for your job? Are you kidding? I, poof, asshole. That's a a rough one. And that was a prime minister who said that? Yep. Yep. So he's allegedly tra- allegedly, but like he would, so he would have been fine dying at his post. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was like, Hmm, interesting. So interesting. like if Clark decided to walk into your place with a gun, like wouldn't that would feel just, nice? Maybe you would have been fine with it since you guys just text each other or since something. You guys are BFFs or whatever. Jeez. Mm. Yeah. So she got that horrible call and, uh, was shocked, was not happy about it. The recording of their phone call ended up all over the news, and Kristen's mom actually called Kristen in the vault where she was being held hostage to scold her for being rude to the prime minister. Oh. Because they played that conversation on the radio. Well, that's a narcissist mom right there, I think. (laughs) I mean, that is just... That's a toxic mother right there. Like is so toxic to feel like oh even my own mother thinks well like first of all wrong well not only that but like like her first thought isn't i'm safe like it's like oh thank god you're safe and you deserve to want to you know be mad that nobody was there for you nobody i mean no one even told her if i were the mom i'd be like no one even told me that she was in a hostage situation or if she was safe and the police didn't do their job and she defends herself and now i'm gonna be mad that one she's like alive to, to be, call someone off but also that she said it so rudely she said what? in a rude way that's gonna make us look bad in the eyes of our neighbors also like by the way if it were a man would it have come off rudely just saying honestly no probably not it probably no. would have come off as noble if sven had gotten on and said mm-hmm. you're playing chess with our lives with the lives of these young women he would have been an honorable been like, man what a hero yeah yep no you're 100 yep. percent right so, oh, so frustrating. This wow, um, talk about getting riled up. Happy I'm New Year! I'm telling you, like it's complicated. It's not like super convoluted. It's just like so bananas that it's like all over the place. Um, it so just, at this, I just feel like a cab is becoming. It's not just the United States in, in this <laughs> well, case. Well, I mean, it's we're we're in the 70s. Like this kind of thing just seems to be pervasive. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so these hostages at this point have no friends on their, like nobody on their side. They feel like Clark is on their side, but he's just manipulating them. Uh, mm-hmm. The police are endangering them and don't seem overly concerned about their safety. And now even their own parents are scolding them for talking back, basically. They're like, they're truly getting no help from anybody yes. except the criminals. Except the criminals. And so this went on for days it just kept going on, continually escalating. And at this point, <laughs> police felt they had finally figured out Jan's true identity. And they talked to Kai, who called to confirm his innocence and be like, you sent my little brother where? Like, yeah. No. Oh, I'd be, that's, that's a lawsuit. Absolutely. Yeah, right? Like, I've had nothing to do with this. You sent my brother in there? Can you imagine if um, someone thought that, like, you were somewhere and then had Francisca go be, like, the hostage s- negotiator yeah. for you and you weren't even there? And it there? was, like, some other random criminal? Oh, my God. So he contacted Swedish authorities long distance from Honolulu to criticize them for, this is also a lawsuit, by the way, for plastering his name and face all over the news, 
saying he was the one holding up this bank when he wasn't Oof. even in the country. He was in wow. Hawaii. <laughs> he was like, I'm on vacation and you're just plastering my name all over town. Wow. Um, and in a later interview, he joked, I'm perfectly capable of blackening my own reputation, which oh. I really <laughs> Honestly, enjoyed. That's that's that. uh, that's a good zinger right there. I agree. I agree. It's like a low blow that you think you have to uh, tarnish my reputation on my behalf. Okay. It's like, oh, like what? Like it's hard? Like I need help, <laughs> right? <laughs> so inside, the hostages continued bonding with each other and their captives. And again, I think this is where it goes back to the element of trauma bonding. That trauma mm-hmm. bonding is probably a big part of this. In many ways, what happened inside would go on to be used against the hostages uh, on the outside, of course, to pathologize them. Mm -hmm. For example, a tissue was discovered in the vault with semen on it. And it turns out one of the women had said she'd kissed Jan and had encouraged him to take care of himself in order to relieve his tension. Uh-huh. And she said she had done it in a way to ingratiate herself with this guy, uh, oh, makes try sense. and secure her safety, the safety of others, by kind of treating him in a romantic and sexual way, an intimate way that she thought would, you know, bind yeah. them in, in, a, in a stronger way, bind them more intimately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in my mind, I consider this a survival tactic. And I I think it's a brave one. It takes mental fortitude. It's something she probably would not have wanted to do. Um, But instead, when this news came out, people said she was a victim who had been assaulted and just couldn't admit it. Oh, my uh, God. That's, I was worried they were going to twist that one. That's an it. easy one to twist. For sure. And, it, of course, it was monstrous for Jan to sexually engage with a hostage. Like, uh-huh. the power dynamic alone, of course, it's it's a heinous thing to do. But it was also wrong for the public to dismiss, almost infantilize her. Yeah. Saying also, like, I mean, she's literally, if this is the victim of a robbery, like, she's going to tell you exactly what happens in hindsight. Like, yeah. she's not going to lighten it and say, like, oh, I wanted this, or I did this, or I was in control of the situation. She's not going to say that, like, unless it was true. And, like, she's saying this was a strategy I tried, and it worked. Yes. And, like, and it, it, I mean, she really did. She said, you know, this was, this was something she understood the situation she was in and she used whatever tactic she could to her advantage. And you know what? Like it worked. And that's, I think people really like infantilized her and said like, Oh, poor thing. She didn't know what was going on. And she got like roped into this. And I think maybe that's where some of the criticism of Stockholm syndrome comes in where it's sort of like, Oh, they're Mm. just like brainwashed into this. And, um, yep. It's not necessarily brainwashing. It's more a lot of times it can be a survival tactic, like a something you you wouldn't understand unless you were in that scenario yourself. Um, I, I can't imagine the layers there of like doing what you have to do to get out of a situation and then being brave enough later to tell your story. And then people who weren't there are like, that's not true. And it's yep. like, are you fucking kidding me? Like. Yep. Oh, poor thing. She just doesn't want to admit it. It's like, ooh, and like it's by the so way, patronizing. As someone who is team freeze and fight or flight, like for her to have even been able to think up a strategy. Absolutely. I, I can't even imagine having the grounding met stability to do that. And like, Absolutely. they're still telling her, oh, you have no idea what happened when she was fully aware of the situation. Absolutely. Like the bravery and like the risk to mm-hmm. her safety, to everyone else's safety um the risk of that is so high and i mean you know she could have it could have escalated it could have gotten worse he could have reacted violently he could have assaulted her he could have raped her like we don't you know if if that those were the risks and yeah. thankfully you know that didn't happen as far as we know but like according to her she was trying to just you know develop intimacy with him in order to Yep. Protect the lives of herself and the other people with her, which is a quite a brave and uh, impressive thing to do, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So as the days went on, Clark was still acting optimistic and snarky, but Jan was just getting more frenetic, more nervous, more on edge. 
Sven, Kristen, Elizabeth, and Birgitta were emotionally and physically exhausted. They wanted to be home with their families. They were missing family events and parties they'd look forward to. And meanwhile, they are still living in constant danger. Mm -hmm. So resentment toward police among the hostages at this point is just growing and growing. Meanwhile, psychologists were getting involved and they were reporting on the potential danger to the hostages' mental well-being for obvious reasons. So one forensic psychiatrist, Jose Gonzalez, who actually had once examined Clark uh, in the past, Mm -hmm. he described Clark as gifted and not at all dangerous to his hostages. He trusted Clark to act humanely and couldn't imagine any harm coming to the hostages under Clark's charge, even with the unknown wild card in the room. Mm. And so that's just another example of how even the people hired to analyze Clark were on his side and respected him and thought he was just like a great dude, you know? (laughs) Man. Folk hero. I I just, wow. Talk about us. I mean, whew. I don't know how he does it. I don't either. Wow. The (laughs) charisma. Jesus. It must be next level. Yeah. So no one in Sweden had ever killed a hostage before, and no one thought Jan and Clark wanted that in their reputation. But at the same time, the trauma of being trapped in such a high stakes situation for so many days Mm -hmm. was obviously bound to inflict long lasting trauma. Yeah. Yeah. So mental health professionals said it was urgent for the hostage's well-being to resolve things as soon as possible. So now psychologists are reporting back to police saying this needs to wind up or they are going to be irreparably damaged by this experience. Like we need to get them out of there. So in a final effort to end the unfolding drama, police made a plan. They were going to drill their way into the vault and release tear gas to incapacitate Jan and Clark and attempt to rescue the hostages. So hang on. So we're going to use a loud ass drill. They will absolutely know what's coming. Mm -hmm. Then throw chemicals into the vault that will only knock out two of the six people there. I imagine the goal was to knock all of them down. And then just drag out their bodies or arrest the ones that, you know, I don't totally know. And guess what? You don't totally know because that is the end of part one. (gasps) Oh, Christine. Gotta cut it off. I'm so sorry. I there's like five more pages. Talk about a plot twist. Are you kidding me? I know this is crazy, right? It's the grape escape. As we said earlier, the grape escape. (laughs) We're going to get them out of here. Oh my gosh. Wow. (sighs) I got nothing to say. Except wow, about a million different times. That's... The only thing I got to say is it just gets crazier. Like you don't think it can and it just does. I don't even know how that's possible. Like, I that's... know. Me neither. But it uh, somehow, somehow they make it work. I can't wait to find out how this ends. It's I just can't like the, wait. a shit show of epic proportions. I didn't even know. I had no, it didn't even occur to me that Stockholm syndrome would come with like an origin story. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Or or from Stockholm. I just, it just didn't even occur to me. I was like, oh, this is just named after someone. A person or. A person. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But to have like such a bananas background story. It's, it's crazy. It's, you know what? And I'm so glad that we actually do have a two-parter because I'm going to find, because I really enjoyed, I mean, this was like two years ago. I watched this series or this it was just like a documentary like a one hour thing about this case and i feel like i didn't do a good enough job looking for it so i'm gonna look for it and next episode i'll have it ready for Mm. if people want to watch it because i think they did a really good job gotcha okay yeah no definitely find it definitely i am very excited wow wow great story so far christine this was definitely a, a good one to start the year off I thought maybe. Yeah, thank you. I'm I'm so glad you liked it. Um, it feels I mean, again, this is one of those stories where like very rarely do we get to have one of your stories never have like a wounded victim ever. I mean, we, they're still traumatized, absolutely. A whole syndrome was named after them. Yeah. But um but yeah, it's nice to that there have there are no murder victims so far, which is a, a rarity on this it's show. It's rarity to get halfway through a story and have no yeah have no murder victims yet oh no what do you mean yet well i'm just saying i don't want to give everything away up front okay 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 well uh thank you everyone for listening to (laughs) 
our first episode of the year. I Yay! don't know where we are in the in the timeline currently, but uh, I hope everyone's having a good year so far. I hope everyone's feeling safe and warm. And if you were trying to grow as a person, I hope you feel some growth. And I hope you uh, liked our little stories. You got a whole, I don't know, like 50 more Banshee this year. Banshee was fun. Loved Banshee it. Banshee was good. Um, and I, if you are a member of Patreon, if you want to go and... Uh, check out our after chat after this episode uh you can do that also reminder that we have um we're going back on tour next month and if you have not gotten your tickets yet please go do that um we'll start mentioning that in the beginning of our episodes um (laughs) maybe but if uh you want some tickets for our new show you are uh welcome to do that on our website yay thanks for listening and that's why we drink